the best part. Action! Well, welcome to the Stone Road Podcast. This is one you ain't gonna want to miss. It's Stars Craig Reed, the Stone Roadie, and Griff, the Rocket Scientist. And don't forget Kathy Godzi and all the good friends that come along. Today we got the waning interest who just happened to stop on by. And I hope I can do this podcast because I'm pretty damn high. <laughs> so why don't you take it away there, Griff Martin? Yeah, okay. Well, here we are on the Stone Roadie Show. We have a special guest, Wayne Roberts, the, the, uh, with the Waning Interest Podcast, The Whip. And so he's on here, and we're doing a swap cast, which uh, I guess Wayne come up coined that phrase. Uh, we Doug Stanhope coined it. Okay, yeah. So so we're doing a simultaneous podcast. We're doing uh, one for Wayne and one for the Stone Roadie Show. And uh, so we're just going to get on here and talk about a bunch of bullshit and uh if anybody's ever not has never seen wayne's podcast you ought to go check it out and if you haven't ever seen ours you need to check ours out so uh we're gonna we're gonna steal subscribers how's that sound wayne <laughs> i'm gonna I, I think i'll be stealing more than you'll be stealing from me <laughs> well yeah you know we have a nemesis so we got a guy who uh <clears throat> he uh makes fun of us because we don't have enough subscriptions uh, compared to him and uh, he's on a fan book page and and so uh we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that guy later uh jimmy slicker whatever his name is and so anyway so we got waning interest on here wayne roberts and uh we're gonna we're gonna uh, probably start off and let i'd say let wayne kind of control it to begin with uh you got any questions for craig wayne Oh, I'm, I'm, I got a few, but uh, first I want to start with uh, welcome, welcome to the Waning Interest Podcast Swapcast with the Stone Roadie Show, the Stone Roadie and the Whip. Sounds like a fucking movie title. Somebody write it. Uh, August 22nd, uh, my senior prom date, Sarah's birthday, 2023, the babbling dabbler, the smallest click on the internet, the pinball brain in your favorite machine. It's like a diary or book, but not a stale or coherent from a more mentally challenged Forrest Gump, or if Mikey and Mouth from the Goonies played a lot of bareback leapfrog years ago, and then three months later, here I am. Hi, guys. How was that yeah, for well, my open? I, I I was trying to do what Craig did, my version, without my my open, uh, but I think we killed it. Yeah, well, what brought us here is we were we were trying to get on his server, or, well, his podcast, uh, what he uses, and what's the name of that podcast? Streamyard. Server? Streamyard, and it was yeah. working great until Craig got on there and screwed <laughs> it up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, nobody could hear. Craig couldn't hear us. We could hear him, and then you know, and then so we said, "Well, we'll jump over on the uh, Zoom," and so here we are, and. Of course, we don't get the uh, the little bells and whistles that, that Wayne has. We don't have any of those bells and whistles, Wayne. We don't, you know, you have all those songs and things that you were going to play. We, we don't do, we don't have any of that. We're not we're technophobes, and you're probably no, no, having... dude. You do all the editing. You put a lot of cool stuff in after and before. I just don't do that. I have it all ready to go, and uh, it just you know, so it just goes up. I don't have to mess with it unless I have to uh, uh, unless I listen back for quality and go. I shouldn't have said that name. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, which happens that. very rarely because uh, I get the names wrong all the time, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, so so here we are, and then uh, well, something pretty cool. Let's talk about that belt back there with Jim Morrison, Craig. Oh, what's this the year, story? yeah, that you, you know, oh, uh, looks like I'm trying to put. I'm, I'm playing with Jim's pecker. Sorry, because <laughs> <laughs> it looks kind of like Ronnie Van Zant's belt. The one that Donnie Van Zandt ended up with, I believe. Craig, you got a story about that, don't you? Well, when I started with a band, I had a belt that was similar to that. It wasn't the real nice silver conches. It was just silver discs. And I wore it one time, and Ronnie was pretty fond of it, so I just gave it to him. I figured that was a pretty good uh, move uh, employment-wise. <laughs> <laughs> Give the boss a present, you know. It Fuck worked yeah. out pretty well, you know. So what like, ended up happening to that belt? 
I don't know. He, you know, it, like I said, it wasn't a real good. It was. It what didn't have the silver conscious like that. It was just like silver discs. They were, you know, but it was pretty cool. It looked cool. I've seen him paper. wearing it in a few live shows and some pictures. It was so in you can the see very, it. very, very, very beginning in '74. But yeah, he uh, got a better one out, you know, later. Down but road. but now now my question though is, uh, but it's nobody seems to point. Maybe people have pointed it out before. But one of the, I did a podcast, I think it was 114, or not 114, 113 maybe, where I did this whole thing. I did a couple where this Guns N' Roses, Skinnered synchronicities, which, you know, a lot of people say Guns N' Roses is, uh, you know, like uh, they were supposed to be our stones. But I see them more as Skinnered with so many similarities. They both had a hell house, uh, so many things. But, and then they've got the album, Give Me Back My Bullets, on that fucking album. On the cover, it looks like Gary's wearing the hat that Slash made famous. It's just that it's not a top hat. It's more like the hat that Ronnie wore towards the end. You got a picture at, of that, don't you, Griff? There somewhere? Can you pull uh, up? Yeah, you pull up I mean, cover? you probably, you I probably won't be able to oh, see it. okay. I thought you had the, oh, okay, you had it on your phone. Yeah, it, it, it looks like a Slash hat. It's a little bit not as tall, but it's got the. Right, it's more that, like the Ronnie hat. That he yeah. had, yeah, yeah. It... But the thing around it, it looks yeah. like uh, the same belt, which is uh, nobody's pointed that out before. And to me, when people talk about Slash, they never they don't mention Gary as much as they should because there's so many Gary similarities. Man, he's he, you know, it's so many. It's 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 insane. But and nobody may, fucking uh, mentions uh, that. They all say, "Oh, Slash is like Joe Barry," or uh, you know, they'll name somebody else, but. I see him so much more like uh, like uh, Gary, like Rosington. And oh, by the way, if you see, I'm wearing the Rosington. I got the sideburns <laughs> and the side goatee burn. and the long hair. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can see that hat on Gary. But right you, can there. you? But you can see it when you look at it. Yeah, there's a little glare. <laughs> but you look at that. Does that not look like the slash hat, but Ronnie's version? Yeah, you know, I think uh, Slash may have ripped that whole thing off from Leon. You know, because uh, well, there's he, a Leon hat too. But well, Slash said the story with Slash says uh, he saw it. The hat, he grabbed the hat and he saw the belt somewhere, and he just threw the bat. He threw the belt on the hat and a last minute thing while he was kind of fucked up on the way to a show or something. If I remember from his book, but so I don't. Yeah, may, I would. I'd say borrowed, but I don't know if he was even know what he was doing with that. I don't think he even knew with the maybe. I don't know, but that's his. I think that's his story. I don't hold me to it. I've, yeah, read, and, I've read the book three fucking times. And that belt that, that Ronnie had that looks like the one that Jim Morrison has on right there, um, G, uh, Gene Odom tells a story about Dickie Betts drunk in a bar, and he has that belt, and he's swinging it around his head, yelling to everybody, Leonard Skinner sucks. <laughs> and they called Gene up in his room and said, you better get down here. Ronnie's getting ready to beat somebody's ass, and it ain't going to be fun. And so, uh, Gene went down there and he had to actually, he beat up Dickie Betts and Get it out. <laughs> yeah, he beat him up. And then, and then he, Dickie Betts had, uh, a couple goons from the bar Dude. beat, beat him up out in the alley and he thought Gene did it. And so he kind of put a hit out on Gene and then Gene went to his trailer later on and said, Hey man, that wasn't me that beat you up. That was somebody else. And so they made, they made up, but yeah, I don't know which podcast that was. It was one where Gene Odom was on the stone roadie podcast. So, uh, interesting. Oh, that's that. Well, speaking of Gene, that's a question that I've had. I don't know if I'm allowed to ask it, but, uh, that's one of the things that I've, I, I met, um, uh, 1997, I was uh, one of the producers. I mean, do you guys know Ron ben uh, the show Bennington on Sirius XM? No. Ron Bennington, the comedian. <clears throat> Sounds familiar, yeah. Well, it used to be it was Ron and Fez, but before that, it was Ron and Ron in Florida. And uh, oh yeah, was, that's right, Ron and Ron. I've heard of Ron, Ron and Ron, Ron show. Ron. Yeah, right. Um, well, in '97, when I was I was Batman, one of their producers, Ronnie named me Batman. Um, everybody had a nickname, obviously, and. Uh, in 97 and we had artemis in and artemis told the fucking story about uh, I, what i've always wanted he told the story about getting shot which of course turns out to be not true i believed it for many years and repeated it which pisses me off uh nothing to, <laughs> and, and i'm not saying anything bad about him i'm just saying that's what happened and one of the things that bugs me is 
every time he tells the story, he leaves out Ken Peden and uh, and uh, Mark Frank. When weren't those two with him? Yeah. And even in the movie, I yeah. watched the scene where he gets out and goes off, and he's by himself. Why does he fucking do that? Even though well, he you, tells, maybe it's because if he and in, in mentioned their name, he'd have to pay him or something. You never know, you know. I mean, but every story, even that, the story, yeah. even when he was on the Ron and Ron show, he told the same story about he was alone. This is ninety seven. He's been saying that story. I've never, I've never seen him. I've never seen. I've seen a bunch of interviews, and I've never seen him in an interview where he mentions their fucking names or that he was with other people. It's always that he was by himself. What the fuck, man? That really bugs me. Yeah, well, it Ken, is no Ken, telling, Kenny, man. Kenny Kenny Peden did say that Artemis was was like the the leader. Well, I'm sure he was. He was yeah, uh, military, yeah, and, but and still, and, and even in the Kenny, movie, Kenny, he's all by himself. Well, Kenny Kenny was hurt, and Kenny said, "I can't cross that creek by myself." And Artemis jumped in the creek, and he said it was only west deep, waist deep, waist deep, or whatever how deep. Uh, but he said, yeah, we can get across there. It's not deep. So they waited across. But uh, yeah, he does do that. But it, he he was kind of like the leader. The, uh, the, uh, Mark that I believe. Frank and, yeah, and, and Kenny Peden were, were pretty hurt. And uh, and our, they were just kind of following Artemis's lead, you know, so. But, but yeah, but, but I, yeah, I, yeah, I could I not see myself this. surviving a plane crash and having three people with me when I go off to places, even if I was the leader. <laughs> I wouldn't fucking leave their names out every time I told the fucking story. <laughs> yeah. Well, there, I mean, there might have been a sniper. Survivors of a fucking plane crash. Come on. There might have been a sniper in the woods that shot uh, Artemis. So you, <laughs> you never know, man. You, you, you never know. I mean, we can't like say that Artemis is wrong because you know you you really never know the truth but see there there's the other part where um i was always on the on the cuz i had never heard craig i'd heard, i'd seen gene talk about it before the plane right before the plane crash the whole thing with ronnie i'd seen many things with him more so i was already in the gene head of of ronnie was passed out he was sleeping and then uh but artemis kept saying you know the whole thing with artemis saying to coming back at the plane and then when craig said that that he did come back. And I was like, whoa, wait. So Gene, is Gene wrong? What? So is Artemis right on that one? So he tells the truth on that one, but he tells, but he leaves out <laughs> shit on the other one. So I'm like, what the, it's fucking, I, that's one of the, I think that's one of the reasons why there are so many people that are so fucking into it. Kind of like, like Manson stuff. And like you were talking about the Jimmy Slicker or whatever. Yeah. It's, when you talk about that, cause I'm a Manson guy and I know a bunch of people that, you know, do stuff talking about Manson and, and the and the actual overall story and how the one that was portrayed to us is complete bullshit. Almost all of it's bullshit, except for some names and some dates here and there. But Maul, everything that we've been taught about that guy is he's not he wasn't the monster that everybody that everybody. I thinks know. Of, I've I've been right? watching some interviews. Actually, the Beach Boys stole one of his songs, and it they not him only off. not only did they steal that song and not pay him for it, but he's also on some other songs. Yeah, yeah. Dennis changed the lyrics on him and changed the title. Uh, but also, and that song is horrible. Dennis's <laughs> version is awful. But uh, if you if you hear the original, it's fucking awesome because um, everybody loved him. Everybody, a lot of musicians fucking loved Manson. They that whole story about he was some hack that you know people thought was a bother and get out of here. That's the complete opposite. He he recorded with the Wrecking Crew. Dennis and and uh, Dennis and and, and uh, uh, his brother, uh, you know, the big writer of the Beach Boys, the crazy one. Brian Wilson, uh, yeah, Brian. 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 They set him up. They set him up and had him record with the fucking Wrecking Crew with Terry Melcher because he was so good. But they buried those tapes after what happened, and what happened was not Manson. He didn't tell them to kill. That was all Tex Watson and Linda Kasabian. Yeah, which turns out that I went to high school with a relative of Linda's. And uh, Glenn so Campbell like, uh, was Glenn Campbell, I think, was in the Wrecking Crew, and he toured with the Beach Boys. So uh, yeah, it's like a a whole there, thing. It's totally. And he recorded other songs with Brian and with with uh, the guys and did a bunch of stuff. But he was tough to get into the studio because he was more of a, you know, he wasn't a studio type person. That's not because he learned all this stuff in prison. So he was never in a real studio. But uh, um, what the hell was I going to say? Uh, uh, shit, shit, shit. Oh, but with that that whole thing with all these different Manson groups 
there's the same kind of stuff that you were described with that Jimmy Slicker with yeah. Craig and all these, you know, yeah. you, know you have to freaks. have a nemesis. There's a whole yeah. thing with it. There's a whole, it's this, it's, it reminded me of all the Manson people, all that crazy shit that I've learned shit from, from the last few years. Well, see what happens is you get, you, you know, you, when you start talking about things and then, you know, you have these guys like Jimmy Slicker, you know, he like Craig, I wasn't going to say his name by the way, but you, Oh, it's okay. It. Because that's not his <laughs> real name. Uh, but but yeah, Craig told a story and how um, uh, Ricky Medlock came before Bob Burns. You want to tell that your version of that, Craig? Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to. Um, uh, what do you What do you call? Um, um, I, <laughs> I, I'm lost for the word. Uh, Mediator. You know, uh, no, uh, Ricky, you know, but people are saying Ricky wasn't part of the original band, you know, and I'm going, well, you know, um, Ricky, you know, Bob, Bob, Bob and Gary and, 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 and Ronnie, you know, did form the original Leonard Skinner. They were the first three and then they brought in and, and brought in Alan, Alan and then, uh, and then Larry jumps. Leon. Oh, jumps from first. Yeah, and then and then uh, and then something happened where Bob quit, and uh, so they they brought in Ricky, and Ricky was the drummer for a while, and then uh, Bob came back, and then they had and then they had two drummers for a while. So, you know, there there you could say that since Bob quit and Ricky was there, and then. Ricky, so Rick, Ricky was. This is there. all before pronounced. Uh, well, it was before pronounced. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's so the you, beginning. You could you could argue the fact that since Bob quit and Ricky came in, that he was with the original band longer than Bob because Bob had quit. <laughs> that point could be argued, but according to this other character, you know, that I'm just full of shit. That I, I'm totally disrespecting Bob because. Uh, I'm saying that Ricky was first. Well, you know, I, I know the story, you know, but what I'm saying is, uh, you know, that Bob was there, but then Bob quit and then Ricky was the drummer for a while. And then Bob came back and they had two drummers. So, but. Well, it could be know. like the airplane story, you know, everybody's got their own version, you know? Yeah. But Jimmy Slicker doesn't count because he's just a fan site guy. Craig well, I'm just, is, I'm, certified. I'm just trying to certify the fact that Ricky was, was one of the originals is what I'm trying to, you know, say. Yeah. I and, and, you know, Wayne, this slicker guy, you know, we'll get him out of the way because, uh, this guy keeps popping up on our radar and he, he used to be a really cool guy. I'm not even sure if it's really the same guy or not, because, uh, the, the guy that, that, you know, is the real guy, I won't mention his name, but Jimmy slicker uh is his is his uh stage name for his fan site and this guy used to be a really cool guy and then all of a sudden he got involved with some jackass that hates craig and then all of a sudden now he hates craig and he hates me but the guy used to be cool um but you know here we are raising money for for plane crash survivors and this guy's doing everything he can to to make us look bad now who's the bad guy right you know you're raising you're raising money for plane crash well, 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 what's funny what's funny is the guy puts me down like i'm nothing and and you know um well you know one of the band's wives kind of stole my my videos and told me they were going to give uh, make a movie and i was going to make a bunch of money and that I, they gave me a rubber contract and then after the movie came out and it was all out this 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 guy started using clips out of out of Freebird the movie to to do documentaries and God he, I don't know how many documentaries he's made but just about every one of his documentaries has got my film <laughs> you yeah. know so uh, and he brags yeah. about how many people he has in his fan site and he, he gets rid he, of as many people that we have as a total every day you know and so oh he, I saw that post. Yeah, he's so made, the guy, he, thinks he, yeah. he thinks he's made himself famous using my material <laughs> and the material from other people, you know, I mean, and he talks about the Stone Roadie shows only got 1700 subscribers and he's got, I don't know, 5000, but we've only been 
I, I, I had a podcast for a little over a year and he's been, I don't know how many years he's been going at it, but, uh, yeah, yeah calm but, down, calm down, slicker, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they got this, uh, I wondered, I wonder I, now I know which, where the, uh, where the bad stuff was coming out, which one of these fans that which one was it the Leonard Skinner family thing or whatever no, no it, it that's was where uh, that's where the bad publicity was coming from for the rocking for a reason when people were getting death threats that that were a part of this Leonard Skinner family so I don't know what it is uh fan site that people were involved in that then they got they were they got caught on camera and then then they started getting death threats. I, I think, uh, and, and these are the characters that put on three benefits but for three different people. And one time uh, there was one for um, Jimmy Van Zandt for his kidney thing. They put on a benefit and somehow all the money came up missing. And I think they blamed, I think they blamed somebody for doing that. And then, uh, then they put up on another benefit and and then uh, lo and behold all the all the money come up missing and they blame somebody else for that and then, then a here, trailer got stolen and then and then and then here a couple well, a month ago or some they did a benefit for uh, Ronnie's cousin that just passed away and uh and uh, they were supposed to, you know, give the money to his daughter or whatever. And she did. And from what I heard, she didn't get nothing. And, and then I heard that they, that uh, Ronnie's nephew, little Ronnie, had some songs that he had published, and somehow they finagled one of his songs and stole it from her, and sold it to somebody, and didn't even mention her name or give her credit for it or anything. So no, we're back to the Beach Boys. You know, yeah. so so now uh, you're involved, uh, Wayne. We've already had our threat, me and Craig. So it's time for you. Now you're involved. <laughs> so so you're going to be getting your threat. <laughs> so yeah, bring I'd it like on, that. mofo. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> but these are the same people that were involved with Facebook when when Chad got involved with Facebook. My son Chad and. And he got on there, and he would, and they were had these stories. They were telling about Leonard Skinner, and Chad was going, "That's not the way that happened. That's not true." And they threw Chad off the the sites, and then Chad coerced me to uh, join Facebook so I could get on there. And I got on there, and I said, "That's not the way that happened. That's not true." And they threw me off these Skinner sites. <laughs> You know, <laughs> we're only talking about speaking it's, it's all, for it's the all, wits. It's, a, for it's the all, pack. it's all a big joke. And then this character posts this post that he's that I've been ducking him for, and, and the guy lives in Australia. He says I, <laughs> I, I got a score. Anybody knows where this Craig Reed's at? I got, a, I got a score to settle with him, and he's been ducking me. You know, I'm not ducking. While your podcast let's has your set up a, box Let's set up right a venue. Your shoulder most of the I'll time. tell you what, Big Mouth. You say you can whip my ass. Let's set up a venue. And let's make it a pay-per-view. And yeah. I'll do I'll do bare knuckles with you for I'll three I'll do the play-by-play play with, with Griff. Three, th <laughs> three, 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 three minute rounds, bare knuckles. Because I ain't got one. more than or three three minute rounds in it. When I when I hit you, I want you to feel it. I don't want it padded with no gloves. So and we got to do bare knuckle. Yeah, and I... yeah he might want to have a go with one of the guests. <laughs> oh, that's what I was going to say for the whips. But you know, the, I, mean, I don't know how old. I think this guy's a whole bunch younger than me. I mean, I'm 73. I haven't I haven't been in a fight for quite a few years i i did i did i, I did some jujitsu classes about 10 years ago is the closest i've been to a fight in about 10 years so so yeah that would be interesting but i'm i'm willing yeah let's do a pay-per-view I, I you know fly your ass over here while from australia and i'm I, we'll meet up in the jacksonville coliseum and have a pay-per-view 
you want to you want to make this public and announce it i'm just i'm making it public and announcing it now you chicken shit son of a bitch let's get yeah, it damn. on oh this is one of the greatest <laughs> yeah. swap i'm not ever. ducking i'm not ducking from you you coward that doug stanhope is going to be so proud threat, that threatens women's lives for going to a rock and for a reason you chicken shit piece of poop <laughs> and for the whips for the waiting interest podcast pack um, oh, i've mentioned God. it before but craig that the, what's beautiful about this is craig is uh craig is the the one of the crew in uh what's your name in the song uh he's the one of the crew that got him booted out of the out of the bar and uh now you know that was, why. <laughs> that was 50 years ago I mean, you know, but, so but Craig, awesome what people too. what people don't understand is the whole "What's your name?" <laughs> I kind of retired. That's from... Craig too. The "What's your name?" because because Ronnie <laughs> would tell Craig to go get the girls out of the audience and you know pick some pretty ones and bring them back, and Craig would ask their name and he would forget it. Yeah, and Ronnie would say, once, "Who right? do we who do we have here, Craig?" And he go, "What's your name, little girl?" And that's where <laughs> Ronnie got that from. No, let's 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 do it. Let's do three three minute rounds, bare knuckles. Right, and He's right back into the fight. <laughs> and I don't care who. And, and, and Jim, I, I guess it's Jimmy Slicker. Yeah, it's it's Jimmy Slicker. Well, he's in Australia. How can I be ducking him? Oh. I mean, I, I got a score to settle with uh, you. I don't even know the can... guy. You guys can meet he's just, halfway, uh, you know, somewhere. These these liberals, man, they're they're something else. They they make up a story and they think everybody's just gonna believe it because they say it's true. And I heard yeah. all those people over there on that Leonard Skinner, whatever that fan site is, that fan site is. I heard all a bunch of liberals, you know. So, yeah, but he lost a, a lot of subscribers though because uh the other day when i posted you know there was a bunch of them said oh i unfriend him a long time oh ago he says he deletes a he says he deletes a hundred a day so it don't matter well he's probably half he's of them don't of even shit. don't even interact on his on his page you know so uh let's make uh jimmy slicker a flicker you, know? <laughs> you guys bail right. out of that damn that guy's a big liar and he starts he's got a, a yeah, bunch he's of got shit enough, uh, for help, no help. reason you know we're uh raising money for for uh, plane crash survivors and he's stirring shit that's all he's doing so uh well, we're anyway. helping right now with what uh, we're doing here with this swap cast of the waning interest podcast and stone roadie uh what we're doing is we're we're he's he's going to lose more than a fucking thousand a day people are going to be jumping ship and coming over to the uh the stone roadie show and uh the waning interest podcast yeah uh, waning with a y by the way and uh uh i wanted to show so see, he this, don't do it, he cool don't thing. do let's move on from that but yeah, he don't do podcasts so he just steals a video and makes i know documentaries or something i don't even know what the character does I don't either, but what, what all I'm, I know I'm, is we're, I, we're doing I, right now I go to watch something that shit. involves. I go to watch some kind of documentary that involves Skinner, and and, and lo and behold, there's my video they're using, and I say this is copywritten stuff, and I, you know, then there's, there's I, I mean, there's at least a hundred or two. I don't even know. It's ridiculous. Yeah, hey, Griff. Yeah. By the way, speaking of that, is there any way? Because I emailed you. I emailed you both the uh, the thumbnail that I'll be using. Is there any way to <clears throat> for you to pull that up and put it on the screen right now? No, no. Craig could okay. Craig could do it, but you know he'd have to go into the uh, in, into his uh, on his. Well, he's dash, got the same. Well, he's got the board. He's got the same pictures on his uh, on his. Yeah, screen, can you but, pull it up, oh, Craig, on the so, dashboard? So what I was going to say is one of the fun things is uh, I, the the whip is is. Uh, I talk a lot about synchronicities and uh, one of the things that I realized while I, one of my favorite bands is junkyard and whip 119 actually had the drummer Pat Mozingo from, from junkyard uh, uh, on the podcast. We almost three hours and it's only chapter one where he's yeah, I back. saw some of that. Yeah. Uh, I he's so, he's so fucking cool. Somewhere. Nice. So yeah, to I me, I, I describe people to because Junkyard never blew up or anything. They had some, you know, they had a little bit of peak bit with obviously with Axel wearing this t-shirt in a, in a picture and Slash wearing a the other t-shirt that I have years ago in a shop, but because uh, they gave them to him. But um, I describe Junkyard uh, as think if 
if ACDC and Leonard Skinner had a baby and Guns N' Roses was their babysitter. That's how I describe them to people who've never heard Junkyard, right? And then come to find out watching you that fucking ACDC wanted Leon and then come to come to realize, oh yeah, Al Cooper played on Junkyard's first fucking album. Yes, yes. Uh, Leon, I guess he he knew the guys in ACDC pretty well. Sorry for the so much, so, sorry for so much fucking. <laughs> <laughs> well, Craig's sister don't like it, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. Which one? Which one is it? Because I know you got a bunch. His, yeah, his sister. His sister likes to watch the uh, podcast. I don't mm. know. It, it, you know, he. I he watch. Likes, I know. She He's... likes Kathy Godsey. She likes. She likes. Kathy. Oh, awesome. she told me. She. I talked. She told me yesterday. She watched the podcast. She goes. Now I like Griff too. I don't want him to think I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could understand. Uh, what's her name, Craig? <laughs> Gail. Like Gail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and she's uh, oh, I'm, I said she was ninety. Yeah, she's she's only eighty nine. Oh, jeez, oh. <laughs> you are so offensive. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but, yeah. um, getting back to what I was just saying. So, Junkyard's one of my favorite bands because they never blew up and got bloated, you know, or whatever. But and and to me also, <laughs> I was in. I did. I I started out in talk radio. I worked with many. Uh, uh, some I already told you Bennington was one of them. Uh, some of the greatest radio people, funniest, greatest radio people ever. I cut my teeth on, and through that, one of them was Suds Coleman with, from the Rick and Suds show. And at first, you know, I was I wanted to have my own show, blah blah blah. But then as I it kept going and working with all these people in the '90s, I was like, no, you know what? I just want to be a young, dirty Suds because Suds was very clean. He was hilarious, and he dropped bombs. He very he rarely spoke, and when he did, all even if he just went, huh, you'd fucking howl because it was perfect. He didn't have to say words, and I always wanted to be a young, dirty suds. That's all I would say, and because, uh, like I said, he was more clean, like a more 50s, 60s mentality, but with a dirty mind, but without saying things that were too great, without being stern uh, or stern-esque. Um, and then a few years later, I end up doing a show with my future ex-wife, and we won an award for best fucking weekend non-music program, mainly because of me being a young, dirty suds. So then that this will make sense when I say that with Junkyard, David Roach, the lead singer and lyricist, if you go through Junkyard's music, you'll be like, he's like a young, dirty Ronnie. Oh, okay. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. If you, uh, you got to li listen to some of the rants that he has and some of the songs. And it's like, yeah, that's like, that 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 kid Ronnie Ronnie Van Zant babysat that motherfucking kid <laughs> David Roach. <laughs> it's because his rants are so great, and like the song Blues, which they spell B L O O Z E. Um, I ain't talking about no lightweight penny, any weekend war. I'm talking about drinking, talking about when you got two bucks left, you got nothing to eat, you just gotta keep drinking. Talking about when you get home at three, but you don't make it till four because you can't find the door. Not just that, you know, that's a little cheaper. It's a little more punk-esque because they have a punk vibe as well with their motorhead vibe. But uh, if you go through his other lyrics, uh, Hands Off, so many other tunes, you'd be like, that's a young, dirty Ronnie Van Zandt. That's one of the reasons why. And they have that little, they have a twang. And you know Bad Religion, right? This yeah, is the band yeah, Bad right. Religion. Mm -hmm. Brian Baker, who was the, him and Chris Gates were the guitar players, the original uh, Junkyard. Um, Baker had when they, when Junkyard broke up because of grunge in the early nineties, uh, mid nineties. Baker went on and uh, joined Bad. Re He's been with Bad Religion since nineteen ninety four, but he still writes new music with the guys from Junkyard. Brian yeah. Baker has been with Bad Religion. He's been that the one with the well. They they both Brett Gerwitz. They all have glasses. All the guitar players, I guess. Everybody but Bentley, the bass player. But uh, Baker is just he's Brian Baker is so fucking fun to watch. He's he's like the punk. He's like a punk Alan Collins. What do you think of the uh, that uh, Oliver Anthony guy that that song that he just came out? You know, that's number one on iTunes. Who are you thinking about? Because of my because of how I am politically, I knew it was probably really good, but I put it off. I might have been the last person to finally fucking listen to it, even though I knew. But I have all these things where even when shit, good shit like that pops, you got to stay back and hold on a second. Don't go, don't comment right away. 
because things will change, the story will change or whatever. A right. la Michael Michael Orr, <laughs> the Michael Orr story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I used to bowl the guy, the kid that played him in the movie, uh, Quentin Aaron. He used to bowl in my bowling league when I lived in L.A. I I was in a league in at Studio City at Pins, and I taught him how to bowl a little bit. Oh, I told him shit. how to bowl better because he, dude, you could be in the bathroom because Quentin is so big. He would loft the fucking ball. It would land over the arrows. If you were in the bathroom, you'd be taking a piss and you'd hear this big thump and you'd go up. Oh, Aaron's bowling. <laughs> it throws it halfway down the lane. Before oh, it my even hits it. God. And it was fucking loud. Anyway. Um, yeah, well, Craig thinks that the Oliver point, Anthony is like uh, Ronnie Van Zant, but I think it's like a Hank Williams Jr. Is what I would say if they both I would say if those two and a few others were at an orgy and Roseanne Barr was the mom. <laughs> that's a good perspective there's a whole say. bunch of sperm in that dude he was <laughs> I, when i finally listened to it i went because i i was i was scrolling i was purposely everybody on twitter was 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 uh was sharing that that uh somebody put i think it was matt orfala put together uh a reaction video with all these people reacting to the song black yeah, white i know Chinese, yeah. all this and I just kept scrolling past it without let, hitting the audio because I didn't. I just like, nah, I'm, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait because it might be something, whatever. And I, I don't know. I think it was two days ago where I finally went. All right, I'm gonna listen to this. And I went, this motherfucker yeah. rocks. Yeah. And, and you, you, oh wait, and did you do an interview with him? No, we're supposed to have. Uh, oh, uh, oh, yeah. We're 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 trying to line that up. Uh, I don't know, Craig. No, don't you know him somehow? Somehow there's a connection. Well, he's one of he's, my he's, Facebook friends. Is a uh, a good, real good friend of uh, his guitar player, and um, and he he was trying to trying to get both of them on, and he and he just said that. Uh, uh, uh oliver he's he's he must get 200 calls a day people trying to get him to sign a contract or Holy come shit. on a tv yeah. show or whatever I can only imagine what his life is like right now get joey and uh, joey in with us you know the guitar player and he's a really good guitar oh player. excellent yeah excellent and, but uh yeah, well, yeah but i but, thought you I know what, say, I, what 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 you said about ronnie i i can compared him to ronnie but you know, it's kind of like, you know, Ronnie was 45 years ago. So, you know, this, this Oliver, you know, he's, he sings about things that didn't exist when Ronnie was around, you know, but well, I, well, you know what, ain't things going on, things going on. Listen to that yeah. song. I, I posted yeah. that a couple of months ago, go and see, you know, I, this is one of the, one of the songs I try to use for people to go, just listen to these lyrics, you know, uh, too much money on the moon. Too oh, many yeah. lives across the ocean. I don't think that they mm -hmm. just sit up there getting high. Oh yeah. He was fucking calling that shit a long time ago. It's the same shit. Ronnie oh, knew yeah. it. Things it's, going it's, on, it's, you yes. don't know. Right. Yeah. 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 If and, you're, five and, foot, you're five foot three and three hundred pounds and sit around <laughs> eating chocolate rounds. Yeah. That's why I say he had to be watching the Stone <laughs> Roadie podcast great. because I think he got that from Craig. <laughs> it's just too coincidental that you know he mentions fat people on in the song and craig that's one of craig's oh oh speaking of things oh yeah and, and with that the fasting thing that craig talks about a lot um i i've uh in 2015 i was doing i was still in la and i was doing a play and right before i started right before we i got the gig and before we started rehearsing i'd already started it because i'm into psychedelics and stuff and People think I do mushrooms all the time. I only do them every year and a half, year, year and a half. I did Kinda some, like two Craig. Days ago. <laughs> I, did, but, uh, I did some a couple of days ago. You, but you get you, a good dose. I just got enough to do a little buzz. Oh, just it. a little, just a little micro dose. Yeah, I didn't get, I didn't, dude. Get one. But wait, but wait, wait. I want to get to good that. One. You've actually done mushrooms <laughs> at the fucking hell house. Oh, I want to yeah. get to that. But before that, yeah. before that, though, yeah. um, just to, to finish the story, <clears throat> um, I was, you know, in my homework of, of psychedelic stuff, I read about how after a, it, with one of the things, one of the good things about one of the many good things about fasting is uh, at a certain point, you'll fucking naturally trip. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's so, why Craig does it so well. So, <laughs> 
No, so, I only when, when I got the fast, when so I don't I know, I know, I know. Healthy. Same here, same here. I try to only eat one meal a day, and that's one yeah, of the I reasons mean. I have this girlish figure. I've never gotten <laughs> fat. Um because I don't, I try not, you know, and it also helps with, uh, you know, morning time, you know, you know, excavating, uh, uh, makes it, you know, smooth as you get older, it's easier, you know, with the less you eat, the easier it is to shit is what I'm trying to say, folks. <laughs> if, you know, if you didn't get the code, if you didn't get the Goody code, um, but what, I, what, what, what the hell was I trying to say? Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Uh, inter- oh, fasting, um, or eating. So, I was like, I think I was three days in when I started to play and I mentioned it to the director who was, I, it was Craig's age. And, uh, and he was like, Oh yeah, dude. And yeah, I did it. I went the longest I went, I think he said 34 days. And I was like, Oh shit. So he was into it and he knew I wasn't just being some LA douchebag. He, he you know, he understood cause he was older and he under, you know, he was mature and he, he got a lot of the stuff I was talking about with him besides some of my castmates. Some of them thought, you know, oh, this fucking douchebag actor. What's he doing? You know, I know a couple of them thought that, but they didn't because they didn't get it. And uh, I know I can understand why it would look that way. But no, I was just I was trying something, you know, and uh, and I, I made it uh, 13 and a half days. And the lady who was playing my mom in the play forced basically forced fucking soup down my throat. <laughs> Yeah, you you could have gone on naked and afraid, man. For thirteen days, you you might have you might have won, you know. Yeah, Yo, and it was it was cool. <laughs> Basically, uh, yeah, all I drank I drank I had a coffee in the morning, and it was just water. I didn't even I barely ever put lemon in my water or anything. Uh, but uh, I never got to the trip part. But uh, well, that's why Craig does so well, because he can get to the trip <laughs> part, you know, and, and then that's what his that's what his prize is. <laughs> the stone roadie in a world where laughter was king. Hey, that sounds pretty good, didn't it, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> the stone roadie. <laughs> but, you know, one time, you know, I had this gummy somebody gave me and I was at I was at my house. Craig came and stayed with me. Right. And, and so I said, Craig, I got these gummies here and I opened my hand and he had them out of my hand and in his mouth and <laughs> down before I could even see what color they were. I was like, I was like, damn, Craig. And he's like, what were you giving them to me? And I'm like, well, I guess that's I was something that guy them. would, something that guy would have fucking done. Yeah, I, I was saving them for when I retired and I could get a buzz, but you know that's okay. <laughs> Craig, Craig needed it more, more than me. <laughs> so, oh, uh, so back to the, now. Let me get back to the doors thing. We got junkyard. Uh, I don't, I don't want to speed through things. I know we're gonna do a fucking chapter two. Um, we're gonna because we've had such a fucking great time already, and everybody's gonna love this. <clears throat> But uh, one of the things I would have pulled up if we were doing the StreamYard thing, I would have pulled up the logo for uh, the Lords, which is uh, I do. I'm in a uh, a Doors <laughs> tribute band. I'm the vocalist. I'm not a singer. That's offensive. Oh, that yeah. would be offensive to singers. Anything on YouTube? Yeah, there's uh, there's a couple of there's a couple of clips on the Whip uh, YouTube page and uh, and other pages. Yeah, there's like a there's like a 45 second clip from one of the rehearsals. We haven't done a show yet. We were supposed to do a show next month, but uh, our guitarist had to, he f- realized he's got something where we can't do it. That would have been our first show. Uh, but it's called The Lords. And uh, some people, it's uh, it's going to be fun to me to find out who gets, who understands the, uh, the and it, The Lords, it's done in that logo. And then in the corner in the bottom, it says a tribute to the music of The Doors. Um and it's going to be fun to find out the, you know, it's like an Easter egg, you know, Marvel Easter egg is like, Lords, what's that about? You know, because a lot of people don't understand that Jim had a book of poetry called Lords and the New Creatures. You cannot yeah. petition the Lord with prayer. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what year was it that, that he died? Um, 71, a month before I was born. Yeah, his, so- his, his soul traveled across the ocean for a few, a couple of, a few weeks and then, uh, into to, from Paris to Maine. And then, uh, Oh, you want to hear the real, the real death of Jim Morrison the, the, instead of that heart attack bullshit? Yeah. What's the, yeah. What's the story on? I, I know it's gotta be different. Real simple. Just think it's almost exactly like Uma Thurman in Pulp Fiction. 
It was China White. China White back then. He hated heroin. That's one of the things that he and Pam would fight about because she was a bit of a junkie. He didn't like it. And when she was when they were broken up, one of the guys she would hang with was called was named. He was called the Count. A lot of people don't know about the Count. He was Keith Richards personal dealer and would stay in Keith's mansion when the Stones were on tour. Um, He had the stuff called this cost. uh, uh, He was it wasn't just him. I believe he also sold Janice the stuff that killed her was China White, I believe. But basically it was like with John Travolta in the beginning of um, Pulp Fiction with Eric Stoltz. And he said, this stuff is white. It's not, usually it's brown. This stuff is white. It's killer, blah, 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 you know, that whole thing. And then uh, obviously later on, Uma thinks it's fucking cocaine and she does a big line and, o- and ODs. That's basically what, that's what happened to Morrison. He was hammered, thought that the fucking China White was blow. He did a line and the count was in Paris as, at the same time. And that's who he acted that he's not part of the story, but the real part of the story is the count and some friends told it later that were there later after the next day that Pam called the count because they didn't have Narcan at the time. So she didn't, she was small and already fucked up herself. He was in the living room or whatever when he did that, basically like Uma Thurman started fucking blah. And the count came over, pulled him into the fucking tub. They tried to revive him. Didn't work. The count bolted. And then Pam told that fucking story, but told the real story to some friends who then since have told that story, the real story, like I just told it. So I did that. That's like the shortest I've ever done. (laughs) (laughs) Well, he, they, they said he died from alcohol. No. What they said. Well, Well, yeah, he was hammered. Their story. Yeah. He was hammered and he was so hammered that he thought that China white was cocaine. So he did a really strong line of heroin, thinking it was blow, and that's why he OD'd. Yeah, and she yeah, was in the other way, room. You only time. need about a match head. <laughs> yeah, the shit was strong, dude. It's basically yeah. like the fentanyl yeah. of the day back then. Yeah, he basically, if, if it was today, he would have died of fentanyl. Anyway, sorry. Well, well, you don't want to take a gummy from Craig either, because he gave me a <laughs> he gave me a gummy and. And I did the whole thing where I did a, a corner of it, you know, and I was like, let me see what's going on here. What's doing with this thing. Right. And so I did took wait? the corner. Yeah. And I waited and I waited. It seemed like 30 minutes. I think I watched something on TV and I was like, you know, and Chad told me when he, when Craig handed me that gummy, he said, draw a cross bones and skull on there because he, <laughs> he said, it's going to kill you. He said, do not do a whole half. <laughs> right and i saw craig take a whole one so so i figured well i can't kill me and that's the last thing craig told me it won't that's kill true. you nope. right well Just by the time i kept whittling away at that gummy and i got down to the half right and then i went and laid down to go to bed and that's when it hit me and all I, all I could do is just lay there and say, just breathe, just breathe, yep. just breathe. Yeah. And then I, when I was able to crawl to the bathroom and, and, and splash some water on my face out of the toilet, then I was, I knew I was going to be all right. And I, I, but I kept saying to myself, Craig said I wouldn't die. I ate three of those things the day I that- saw you eat three of them. <laughs> and then you went on stage. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's video of that. Oh, boy. And he was driving, too. Uh, oh, with, shit. On about two of them through the rain, <laughs> through that rainstorm. Right, Craig? Yeah. I opened the garage up, and and Chad Reed and Lisa's wife, they came. They both, they looked like <laughs> they were both white as a ghost when they got out of that car. And Tanner was like, I thought he was driving good. But they were. <laughs> oh, dude. No. Oh, oh, yeah. that got to stop there. Your grandson is uh-huh. named Tanner. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah, yeah. The whip that I just released today, whip 120, I go over it, but I also go over it in whip 18, where in whip 18, uh, winning interest podcast 118, did I say 18? 118. Uno, uno, ocho. Um, <laughs> uh I was just, I, I had been meaning to tell a story because I tell stories, like I said, at the beginning you know, the little thing, it's like a diary or a book. And I was telling, I told one of my, my uh, I'd been meaning to for like the last, because uh, some, mo- some of my podcasts, some of the whips are, most of them are just me, but I have guests as well uh, here and there. 
so when it's me, I just, you know, I tell stories like the diary of the book thing, but also with guests. But, you know, anyway, I'd been meaning to tell one of my Tanner Boyle stories where back in Little League, we, my team, I was on the A's and our our uniforms looked exactly, almost exactly like the Bad News Bears, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you know, and I played second base and shortstop and I had a little bit of an attitude. <laughs> <laughs> and I few a little I threw a, little, a few fits kind of like Tanner on 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 the field and <laughs> and one of the stories one of the stories I told on whip eight one eighteen um uh I had I, I I one of my favorite things to do was steal bases I fucking loved stealing I was because it was back in the heyday of Ricky Henderson and Ricky Henderson was on the A's and I was on the A's so it was all this whole thing it was all weird it was synchronicity type back before I knew what those fucking things were back then uh back then i said back twice sorry um anyway i steal second in this one game and i I go right under the kid's legs he was a lefty shortstop covering second which was one of the weirdest things but that's little league Mm -hmm. i slid completely under his legs he he hadn't even got the ball yet nor tagged me and i was called out and i'm like what are you talking about what the, and I fucking you know yeah. what was I bunch 11, of liberals 12? bunch of liberals did that. I mean yeah. I fucking pulled my helmet off and drop kicked it across the field. <laughs> what are you talking about? You fucking I was fucking screwed. <laughs> and I got kicked out of the game. <laughs> so I tell that story on a Friday night, Saturday morning when I record Whip Eight One Eighteen, and I'm not paying attention to my local stuff. I just moved back to my my town a couple of years ago. Uh, I was in LA before for almost 20 years and then Nashville before that in Florida for that. But I grew up here and I was, so my little has come to find out. I wake up on Sunday, Sunday afternoon or whatever it was when uh, I didn't wake up in the afternoon, but I think it was in the afternoon when I found out that my little league right here, my little, gray new Gloucester, they won the fucking state and they're going to go to the preliminary round before the little league world series. I'm like, how synchronicities yeah, oh shit cool. what i didn't even wasn't following it and, and i didn't find out until after i told that story the day after i told the story so then uh anyway so then i I bring it back up in whip 120 that i just released today um because i recorded that instead of i was supposed to record with pat from junkyard and then they got we got the eastern pacific thing all screwed up which i was very fucking clear in a couple of fucking emails um but anyway so i was all ready to go kind of like we were earlier and i went oh fuck it we're not doing it oh i just well, i recorded a solo one and i saved it and then i recorded with pat and released that one first because of the numbers um so i recorded 120 before 119 so in 120 there's more of the little league thing anyway it gets back to tanner you know, all the synchronicities between skinner yeah. me, doors craig you know, he's like me. Craig is basically so. And that's the other thing where I connect with you guys when I when you because all my Skinner shit on YouTube, you guys pull you guys just came up and recommends because I've got so much Skinner shit in my that I've watched. Um, because I, I watch one, I watch at least once a month, I watch one of the fucking 76 or 77 live shows. Um, uh, and plus, there I have a Skinner YouTube list, uh, playlist. Um, but when you know, the whole thing with Craig, everybody came to Craig saying, oh, you should write a book. No, I'll just do this podcast. I'm like, that's what yeah. I do. I've been doing that since 2019. I do the same thing. So I'm like, I'm like a young, dirty Craig. Well, Craig, Craig says that he's never read a book. So why would he write one? You know all these synchronicities I pull out of my ass? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So anyway, does it, all the secret that all that? Well, we have a lot of so that I, going on. We have a lot of that going on with the plane crash survivors, and you know, any time that I mean, we don't even plan anything. It just kind of like it, everything's set up to happen without our knowledge. We just kind of go with the flow, you know. And then we, the whole thing where we we met uh, Zach Lane, and you know, and then you know, Zach is is uh, oh man, that fucking kid guy. is. Yeah. Fun to watch Holy and then shit. he recorded with Derek hess uh you know that little demo thing we did down there and sata singing did you see that you know oh, yeah. they did get away in the rossington collins and and then you know i wear the rossington did i say that anyway yeah so it you know it's kind of like going crazy and then of course there's a lot of like buddy crump you know and fortune child those guys are 
you know, they, they're tied in with the plane crash survivors, you know, and, and stuff like that too. So it's all crazy how everything comes together, you know, it's, Isn't it's, it? it's weird. Oh, too. and that's, Oh, that's another thing. Uh, when it comes to all the, the guns and roses, uh, Skinner, uh, uh, synchronicities, Bob Burns, we talked about, don't go yawning, Craig, uh, go ahead and smoke <laughs> another bowl. Um, you just smoke some sativa. Um, the whole thing with the the drummer thing, <clears throat> Bob Burns, you know, who, you know, who was the, he's the OG uh, Skinner drummer. You could say that Steven Adler is not the OG because there was, uh, fuck, I can't remember who the kid, who the, the drummer was before, before they did the, the solidified GNR. But first two albums, there's Steven Adler. Same thing with Skinner, first two albums with Bob. He gets booted for, you know, being crazy, drug addict, drugs, whatever, fucking fame going to your head, all a big fucking mix of shit. That's what happens when nobody knows who you are. And then all of a sudden, everybody knows who you are, uh, especially fucking 50 years ago. Jesus Christ, there was less people. So even more knew who you were. Um, and, then, you know, Stephen Adler, that whole thing. So that's another synchronicity I wanted to point out when I because that's all I talk about is synchronicities and. <laughs> that kind of shit and you know they both had the hell house oh uh psychedelics you mess craig you were messaging about doing this uh in the weeks that we've been doing that uh one of the things you said was you saw something about me talking about uh mushrooms or whatever and you want to talk about psychedelics and there's another thing you got fucking hell house both guns and roses had a hell house too it was just on the sunset strip off the uh off of hollywood boulevard or sunset strip behind the guitar center but, you know, totally different, but they called it the hell house where they rehearsed and kind of lived. Uh, but were you the hell house where Skinner wrote most of the fucking classic tunes that most people know? Um, everything basically before give me back my bullets, right? Um, you fucking actually tripped at the fucking hell house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but but it that wasn't the real real hard ones, you know. It was just, uh, you know, they were the fresh picked. You know? Oh, yeah, so you didn't cool. let them dry enough? Oh, so do you guys no. want to know my? You want to know my psychedelic thing? My hardcore psychedelic thing? No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't really get the real real leave your body experience type thing. It was just you know more or less of a good buzz, but yeah. But, but yeah. nowadays, but you, tr- at least you, you did mushrooms at the hell house. That's fucking yeah, awesome. That's yeah. kind of like you were at, uh, you know, you were at the, you, you know, you were there when they turned the lights on at fucking CBGB. Well, who did, who met you first, Kathy Godsey or, or Griff? Cause I was talking to Kathy Godsey today and she, and I was telling her why I was going to go off. Yeah. I, I, I've seen, uh, Wayne's yeah. podcast and then. I don't know if I emailed you or you emailed me, but we wanted to, to get him uh, on the podcast and then either go on his or he, and then, you know, we kept messing now we're around doing with this. that. Yeah. And then we kept messing around with that rocking for a reason. And we had some yeah, guests had that of, we wanted uh, to get yeah. on, but yeah. So finally we're now we're, uh, yeah, we got Wayne on and, you know, we can collaborate, you know, synchronicity, like you said, you know, who you knows? Go. That's well, why it's a swap cast. Both, well, it, but up. anyways, I've, cool. I've, 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 I've back and forth between Griff and Kathy Godsey. We've been talking about getting together with you. And then I was watching one of your podcasts and you were talking to a guy about doing doing heavy doses of mushrooms. And I was, I was I cracked me up. I goes, well, maybe we could do a podcast to have some <laughs> some something in common to talk about. <laughs> There you go. About mushrooms. There you go. <laughs> well, you maybe must... you maybe you guys can do mushrooms on a podcast and we'll no. see how you act. No. No. <laughs> no, that's, no, no. no, that's disrespecting the mushroom and we'll have bad <laughs> trips. <laughs> no, fuck that. No way. I'd prefer to fly out to Ohio and uh and uh, what, and, uh do you see do it, it on do, you... do it with Craig personally. Do you see oh, a big oh, what, difference? Oh, what he's talking you're talking about that's I think that was with Daniel Knopf. Who is the creator? Remember the show Carnival on HBO? Uh, not really. Carnival back it was twenty. It's twenty years old. It, it was a. It was like it was like an old. It was it was back in time. It was like took place in the early nineteen hundreds, uh, and it was a, a weird carnival with freaks, or whatever. He, he created that show. It was on HBO years ago. He was also a writer on Blacklist. 
uh, many other fucking shows. He's written for a lot of stuff. Anyway, that's who I was talking to because we did. He, we were we knew each other from a film thing I did years ago. And that's funny about that. Kind of like what I what, what I was just saying. What what, what you, or what Griff was just saying in a different way is uh, <clears throat> we talked about mush, mushy and my heroic dose and some other stuff. Well, a week later, he fucking texts me on a Sunday morning and says, "Call me when you can when you get up." So I'm like, oh, shit, what did I, oh, does he want me to take the podcast down? Something go wrong or whatever? Yeah. What what happened? What did I do wrong or whatever? I call him and he goes, so, you know, I had a bunch of friends and family watch the podcast. And one of my friends uh, brought me over a bag of mushrooms. You want to come to Florida and trip with me? <laughs> <laughs> How do they do those mushrooms? Are you, are you do they serious? Have, do they have like a dosage, like in milligrams, like they do? I, the, I, the I usually do. A, can, yes. I usually do a gram. I, have, I usually do a gram, but do that's you, not do enough. You see, big, you see, do you see a big difference between the buttons and the stems? The buttons are a lot more stronger to me. It depends on uh, you want to look for things where it looks like it's moldy, where yeah. there's a lot of blue in it. You want to look for that and those things that that to me as what I what I've in my learnings and my my experience those have given me the most uh, visuals. It's not hallucinations; it's visuals, um, and visuals are fucking are fucking fun, dude. I learned in my heroic dose, my first heroic dose. I learned what the Smurfs and the Oompa Loompas and the, <laughs> and, the, and the and the and the Munchkins really are because those are all psychedelic stories. It got to a point after my yawning, after I was like, oh, my God, wow. After you go through the the uh, the come up in The Wizard of Oz, in The Wizard of Oz, it's a psychedelic story, obviously. To say People say, oh, yeah, yeah, but they don't really know when they go, yeah, I know. They don't really know until you really have done it. The tornado that she's in, that that represents the come up when, you know, when you start to feel it and it feels like your brain's going, getting separated when it's really coming back together <laughs> and you just have to say, Oh, that's right. That, that's right. I'm just, it, it's the mushy hitting. It's the mushy hitting. It's only 10 minutes of this five, 10 minutes of this. I'm going to be good. Just keep that in mind. Cause that's where people go off. That's where they have supposedly bad trips. Cause they, they come up freaks them out. When, if you just that 10 minutes, you just ride it. It's basically, it's like the first, that first hill on a fucking roller coaster. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. And then everything's fine. Um, it's the same fucking thing. Well, when you uh, anyway, so at one point after that, and then I do a whole bunch of yawning for like five, 10 minutes, and it feels like I'm almost going to get lockjaw and tears that, as Bill Hicks recalled them, tears of forgiveness uh, when he was tripping. Uh, those come out. So I, I I get prepared now with a roll of paper towels, soft ones, bounty sometimes. <laughs> Not that this is an ad. Damn. but i get ready i get ready for that you, you learn as you do it you get like I, I also get ready when i come down i want fried chicken fried chicken is the best when you fucking come off your peak to trust me on that trust me people well, hey, trust how me about this wayne what about if you go on that intermittent fasting and you and you oh wait i do that beforehand about, yeah if i'm gonna you, trip if i know i'm gonna trip if i know i'm gonna trip on saturday i i well yeah the, yeah, the, the more you don't eat beforehand, oh, I got more for this. The more you don't eat beforehand, the more you fast beforehand, the harder it hits. So if I know now uh, I'm going to trip on Saturday, I don't have to even try. I will not eat anything after fucking Thursday night. And I also won't drink anything but water because your piss when you're tripping is holy water. If you catch the first couple of fucking uh, first couple of a little bit of the first couple of peas after you've eaten mushrooms, catch that and set it aside. Oh, yeah. If you've just drinking, if you've had nothing, that's what that fountain, those fountains with men or boys peeing. That's so, what that represents. So soak a rolling paper in it. Right. And then you, uh, maybe you could do that, too, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. But I tried it and it works because what happened? You set it aside. Only a shot, maybe a shot. And so it tastes like uh, it tastes like stale soda. That's all it is. And, it, and, it, and that's one reason that you only drink water for the next couple, the first couple of days before that. So you make sure you're clear. So it's as clean as possible. Just drink water for the, if you know you're going to trip on Saturday, don't drink anything but water from Wednesday on. And your piss will be clear as fucking bell. Um, but this will have some psilocybin in it. You set it aside. And after you come down, if, when you feel like you're coming off your peak, uh, fucking boom, you'll be back up for another 30 minutes. 
<laughs> no shit. That's why it's called holy water. And that chalice in the fucking church. You see, look at Craig. That's gears, really a mushroom. Turning in Craig's if, head. If you let a psychedelic mushroom grow all the way out into a chalice, it goes from a fucking bulb and then to a table, and then it'll grow into a chalice. If it's psychedelic and you put water in that for a bit and let it sit, that's the chalice in the church. The fucking that that the bread they put on that circle bread on your tongue, that's a cap. The holy water is that what in that chalice, the real chalice in Indiana Jones in the Glass Crusade? It's the fucking one that looked like a mushroom, <laughs> because Jesus was a mushroom. Well, have you ever born of a virgin? Born of a virgin. How do you explain the virgin birth? Oh, because it was spores. How about the peyote? Have you ever messed with any of that? No, I haven't done peyote yet. Yeah, I've, I've heard mm. that's a bad that trip. Makes, it no, makes it can be. No, it's it. At first, it's kind of it's kind of like ayahuasca, basically. What, what I've known, what I've been told. But let me finish the mushroom thing. My first heroic dose, the little people thing. So <laughs> after I came, after I stopped doing the the my first batch of yawning and the tears of forgiveness, um, and it got rid of depression. I can notice for the next three months because I had like a dark cloud follow me for a year and a half before I did that shit. And the next three months were like, I felt like I was fucking 12 again. Um, I felt like I was Tanner Boyle again, just saying. <laughs> um, so uh, um, into my peak, all of a sudden, I'm just sitting there, my buddy Tim and he were both just kind of in, in the apartment, just like, wow, before we opened the door and went out and like it was the fucking, like it was uh, uh, Willie Wonka, like the chocolate factory before he sings, when he sings the imagination song after he opens the door. Anyway, at one point, I, I hear giggling on my shoulder and I'm like, what the fuck, dude? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? And it was and, and kind of like, the, you know, when you get a twitch in your eye and uh, it stops when you and it won't stop. But when you look in the mirror, it stops as soon as as I, I turn my head to look and see what the fuck is on my shoulder. It stops. And then all of a sudden it's over here. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? and that's how i reacted i wasn't scared i'm like that's the smurfs the little people all that shit they you, they're around but the leprechaun you're never gonna fucking find them so that's so the in point a, in a but session they're there when you're tripping and they're in a, helpers anyway, in a trip session so let's help me understand so what do you do you get home from work and it's like five o'clock and how much time do you have to a lot to be on this trip well the 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 evening and, and preferably i'm not working the next day okay. even but but there's not much of a crash it there, there's not that's the beauty of yeah. mushrooms also is it you don't get the crash that you do from acid yeah um because acid can make you feel like you just fucking you did a bunch of blow oh and and because drank a because case of there's beer. a lot of fungus stuff in mushrooms sometimes you get some really weird stuff to come out of you though <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you had a stomach thing going on there for a while, didn't you? Craig? Oh man, I had some. I did. I did the mushrooms that one time, and boy, it's got a lot of you know, Sometimes it's got fungicide you stuff in it, you know. And yeah, you got yeah, you got to make sure it'll you break get it from a good shit, place. It'll break some shit loose in you. <laughs> yeah, you had. Some yeah, there's humps. that famous meme. There's that famous meme, isn't there? Uh, I've seen it a few times where uh, something about. Um, Oh, that's uh, something about it's a cartoon and the guy's taking a shit and he's like, oh, my God, I didn't believe these mushrooms made me. It's so cool, <laughs> but they made me shit, you know, gave me the shits or whatever. And then it, it, the next shot, he doesn't realize he's actually in the, in, a, in the middle of a crowd and everybody's watching him. I can't remember what the meme is, but I think people will know what I'm talking about. But I've never um, uh, the last couple of times I did it, I did it as tea. I made it. I crushed it up, I mean, and it I is, do tea. It is yeah, tea. I do, and it, it comes on faster, but it makes you. It makes you. Uh, it makes you pee a couple extra times because it's yeah. it, that liquid. It gets. It goes through you pretty quick because you know you didn't chew them up. Um, but I remember at my buddy Phil's place. I I did it with Phil, and he didn't. I I I got it enough for basically uh, both of us to do uh, about five grams a piece. Well, he didn't oh, do. Man. <laughs> he didn't he didn't want because I can't do less than that. Otherwise, it's like somebody's tapping me on the shoulder constantly and like, stop it. It's bugging. You know, nothing's happening. Um, And he didn't want to do all of his because he was afraid and he didn't do him. He didn't know it as well as me anyway. So he only did half. Of his, so I basically did around seven, seven and a half myself anyway with all. I just took his the rest of his. And the coolest everything at his place because he does. He's an artist and he's got all kinds of stuff. That's that's a lot of it's 
black and white, but then there's like a piece of color somehow in the middle or off to the right or off to the side or somewhere. So it's kind of weird. So I'm surrounded in that and the lights are low. And so, and it was really cool, but all my visuals were black and white. Like it was all fucking fifties TV. But then I go into his bathroom, I turn the light on and all the all the fucking all the different colors in his bathroom are like whoa hitting me like i just walked into a carnival like holy shit it was fucking it was fucking wild man yeah we used to do them when i was a kid uh we would we would uh go out into the woods and we would we would get a pasture out there with all the cow shit in it and then we'd take some cans of sterno and we'd bake our tea we cook our tea up in the you know on top of the sterno and then we would just trip out in the woods, you know, or we'd take some with us I'm to the drive in movie and, and do them. But I didn't ever get a, a bad trip uh, or a, a really heavy trip, you know, but, uh, but <clears throat> so Craig, how long does a trip last? Oh God, I don't know. I do them about seven, eight o'clock and, you know, I just, I end up in in, in bed by midnight. Yeah, seven eight o'clock, Ooh, seven thirty. And I wake up. So and... the next morning, you wake up and you're fine, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, it's been so long since we did it, and we probably weren't even making it right. You know, uh, we tried eating them, and yeah, I, I remember getting a weird, different kind of a buzz, but uh, I, I really can't remember what it was like. But uh, but yeah, nowadays, I mean, the way they are with the medical marijuana and then everything's metered and measured and, and you can get you a bag of mushrooms. Uh, I don't Not know. Where, bags, does, dude, where does them. one get one, a mushroom? Well, bag? I get them. That's the thing. I get them from different places and it's, it's weird. If I could get them from the same place, I'd know what dose to do, but I just, I, I kind of like, just like doing a gram, you know? And like a lot of times I'll do a gram and I'll really get a good one. And sometimes you do it and, you, and it's not so great, but, uh, you know, if I could, if I could get them to, to where it was consistent, I, I'd do, you know, a couple of two or three grams, you know, but, um, you know, I don't know. I know there for a while you were doing them like for about three months you oh were... <laughs> yeah i did them i yeah i did i did them for i i had i got a bunch so they were the same tight kind so i knew what they were so yeah i did them for like a six weeks or something like that. oh yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it was and, uh, until they were gone <laughs> yeah it was, uh, but i but didn't you were, get, but you were just but you were just microdosing away with them. yeah right you what but you were you were just microdosing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was yeah. just you gotta do the heroic. You gotta do, see that's see that's kind of what I did. I would um even though I've been a Bill Hicks fan. That guy said this the microdose just to do a gram, you know. Yeah. Just, which is good. It which is good. It's got it's been it's definitely time has and because it's got all the 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 f- uh, fungus shit in it, it really cleans you out. It, it really uh does a lot absolutely. For absolutely but uh yeah. and it, it in the the microdosing is is got its good parts but uh if you want to have the spiritual uh experience and because that's the most spiritual experience i've ever had was on psychedelics on to the, the the kind the, the ones that I, i've also done ibogaine but i wasn't able to do the flood dose of ibogaine that's a different story but when it comes to <laughs> the mushroom when it comes to the mushroom thing um I was that way to where I I never did enough. That's one of the, that was the thing. I I I'd done them a bunch of times, and I knew all this stuff about mushrooms, and I was already saying that Jesus was a mushroom because it that that's because <laughs> you can't explain it. You know, you can't explain the whole. That's that's what exp, that, that the mushroom is what answered all the questions. Christmas is about mushrooms. All that stuff that we do is all about mushrooms at Christmas. Um, the tree and all that stuff, the red and white fucking. Uh, gifts wrapped underneath the tree and all that stuff. It it just goes on and on. But anyway, the the point being that when 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 it was brought up to me, oh, here's another synchronicity I just thought of when it comes to this. The guy, my friend Jeff, he passed uh, a few years ago. Uh, Jeff Oliver Mad Oliver Madley Clark. I worked with him at Premier Radio Networks in in Los Angeles. He was the head, uh, he, he supervised the, the network operations center. 
look like a roadie. And he was for a little bit, did a lot of stuff. He's the one that introduced me to the whole thing about Jesus was a mushroom. And when he first said it to me, and I wasn't offended, I just had work to do. And I was like, all right, dude, you're talking too much. Get out of my studio. I got shit to do. And then the second time he mentioned that Jesus mushroom stuff, and he talked about the virgin birth. How did that? How does that explain? I go, yeah, I know. I know. I've been asking that myself. How do you explain that? I'm, I'm fucking, it's fucking ridiculous. Well, spores don't need seed. And then I started putting <laughs> it together like... Oh, yeah. So Jesus was born in a manger in a pile of cow shit. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> eat of my flesh, eat of my body, that whole thing. Mushy or fleshy. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you should the write Pope, a book, Wayne. The Pope, dresses, <laughs> the Pope dresses like a fucking mushroom. <laughs> the Vatican has two giant mushroom fountains and a pine cone statue, a trinity. A pine cone statue, what's the pine cone represent? From the pine tree, Chris, back to Christmas, the pine cone represents the pineal gland, your third eye, oh, yeah, which yeah. gets which gets squeegeed off, as Bill Hicks would say, <laughs> by the mushroom. Oh, hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're tripping balls, who do, <laughs> who, who do you sound like when you talk? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus rises every motherfucking day out of dead shit. Rose from the dead? Where do mushrooms come from? Dead stuff. <laughs> Maybe that's you know why Grace you know Slick sung about it, you know? Grace that's Slick. Right. She, yeah, well, she, back to that. That's the whole thing where you reminded me of uh because Grace Slick told a story about Jim when they were together when they were in France, or I think it was in, in Europe in uh 68 or whatever. And with when you were talking about Craig just gra gobbling up all those fucking when it, the hand oh, was yeah. out with all the shit, that's what Grace talked about with when they were walking through the streets. J Morrison was just people were handing him shit, and he was just going donk donk donk. Oh yeah, that's Craig. And then he passed out. They had to fucking he passed out on stage. <laughs> yeah, I just held my hand open. I had a few gum. Oh, I, it was a rope. It was one of those ropes, is what it oh. was. It was a rope, and Greg Craig just grabbed it. And just, <laughs> and just threw it in his mouth and i go craig man i meant to say that was a piece of dog shit <laughs> <laughs> well it was good <laughs> it was good dog poo anyway with this with the with the uh with the with the psychedelic stuff i mean there you have it i mean all the christmas stuff dude a christmas story uh, a christmas carol Explain the Christmas Carol to me. Okay, so this rich twat piece of shit doesn't care about anybody. All of a sudden, in one night, has these visions and then wants to give everything away and help everyone. Sounds like fucker was tripping balls. <laughs> yeah, Morrison. Morrison must have been tripping. Oh yeah, he tripped a whole bunch. That's where a lot and, of their and lot Oliver of where his Anthony, lyrics came from. Oliver Anthony's but, probably but, tripping. But yeah, <laughs> he oh definitely he oh he's out yeah. in the woods. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. there's yeah. a lot of cow shit. Um, so, uh, what was I saying though? Those were where some was good I? lyrics, but where was I with the, you the... were back to the Jesus thing. Yeah, I know. But what exactly was I saying? Oh, uh, I don't know, man. It was pretty far out there. Uh, I was getting, no, I know Craig lost. laughed, Craig <laughs> laughed. What the hell was I saying? Where was <laughs> Sorry I? Sorry about that, man. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, that's what I do. I'll find it. And, uh, it's kind of like my penis at some point. Um, <laughs> um, what the fuck was I saying? We were talking about Grace Slick. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, we had that with the, with the, right, with the, sorry, not trying not to smoke. Um, <laughs> with the Morrison thing. Oh, the, 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 the tripping, something about tripping somebody. But you said Morrison, but I was saying something when you brought up, back, back, back up Morrison. Uh, fuck, what was it? Anyway. Oh, God damn. Oh, the religious stuff. Oh, 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 that's what it was. Christmas Carol. Um, Scrooge. If you go and you read um, testimonials of people that have done either peyote uh, or mainly ayahuasca or ibogaine or iboga, uh, those are two natural. Those are three other natural psychedelics, and I'm talking natural only um, because it has to do with different regions, and that's where all the religions come from, or the different regions of whatever mush whatever psychedelic natural psychedelic was there um that's why hindus think cows are holy why because god comes out access to god comes out of their ass and their shit holy shit <laughs> okay and their and, gods and they are, like to take a bath in the, in the cow piss 
and the ga- and the- holy water you mean and then and then right. their uh their gods are all hermaphrodites mushrooms spores we're back to the mushroom there's no seed there's no male female um there's that whole thing but anyway uh but back to um uh shit shit where was i again oh christmas carol ibogaine or iboga there's two different versions of the Ib- Ib- ibogaine comes from iboga they use ibogaine to help get people off opiates which works really well but you go into a trip that's very similar did you watch game of thrones yeah a little bit you remember, yeah. remember the part where the whole thing with bran the tree of life that whole thing remember when bran goes back he's he's with max von Sido, Sido and uh but he's invisible kind of like the ghost so of these christmas people past that, are, that are writing all this stuff they're tripping yeah and remember uh when those people were writing these stories these these stories that have lasted all the long lasting stories are psychedelic stories and one of the reasons they've lasted was they they were started back then those people didn't have a bunch of shit distracting them like tv so they yeah they writers were tripping balls to find out all these fucking weird shit all these things and going whoa a christmas carol scrooge he was tripping on ayahuasca you basically have that christmas that you have you'll have or ibogaine testimonials read it about it for people and they basically they're like they have a moment where they have these moments where they're back in time standing there invisible watching something that happened to them when they were between birth and seven years old kind of like the dexter thing uh and uh some kind of trauma and they see it from a whole different angle they're about they're able to let go of it and that's one of the reasons why people come out no longer depressed and they feel much better about everything and realize that whole thing about we're all one and they're much better people. That's one of the reasons because they, their your traumas are dealt with kind of like how it maps multidisciplinary association for psychedelic studies. They've been doing this thing for years. Uh, speaking of vets, <clears throat> speaking of vets from whenever we were talking about vets, vets, um, my dad's a Vietnam vet, um, PTSD. They've been using uh, uh, MDMA to get rid of PTSD on mainly vets, a lot of other people too, but it's, vets are, uh, are seriously encouraged to, to, uh, to join their studies. They're like, um, set it, they're, the numbers are around 70% or no more PTSD. Well, I wonder and the though... numbers would be even bigger because they go through this trial of there's integration where they talk to a, a therapist for a couple of, uh, I, t- uh, my old podcast, I had one of the therapists on and they do this three weeks of integration where they talk about stuff. And then they do the ther- the session in the, in the office. And then three weeks after they talk about what happened and then they do another one. So they're supposed to be three. Well, some people have been, I'm good to go after two or three and then they drop out. So the numbers would be more like 90%. If the because well, they can't use the people that dropped out after one or two sessions. I wonder how the first time somebody did a trip, they picked a mushroom out of a cow patty and they said, Hey, I think I'll eat this. As you Bill know, Hicks, like... as Bill Hicks put it, we went from ooh, ooh, or like the Terrence McKenna stone date theory or hypothesis, um, uh, mm, 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 eating stuff and finding stuff. They went from ooh, ooh, they found these mushrooms and went, oh, 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 oh. Oh, I think we can go to the moon. Greg, did you ever do any mushrooms before you met Skinner? No, huh? no, no. So the first time you did shrooms was at the Hell House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is so fucking. Yeah, hey, awesome walk, us, story. walk us through a day so at awesome. the Hell House. Walk us yeah. through a day at the Hell yeah. House with the mushrooms, man. How did it all go down? With with, with mushroom, I, yeah. I did, didn't eat them during the day. I just ate them, you know, at nighttime. So what? Uh, help us understand. So okay, the band got through practicing, and they said, "Craig, you got to stay here." So tonight. you just got through. You just got through listening mm-hmm. to the bare parts of uh, railroad song or uh, swamp music, and yeah. then they fucking leave, and then you you go and chew on some mushy, knowing there's gators fucking twenty five feet away. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, yeah, the first yeah the first time I. Um, uh, it was, um, Gary Rossington's time to, to stay out there and he didn't really want to stay. And I, I was staying at the eight days in with Bob and, and, uh, Ed King and, 
And I just said, you know, Gary, God, I'll stay out here. I, I, I'm just staying there eight days in. It ain't no big deal. I'll just hang out out here. And he said, no shit, man. Cool. So <laughs> he went and got, pulled, got it, picked a mushroom and came in and gave it to me and, and washed it off and, uh, and, and gave it to me and, and Ronnie handed me a 22 rifle and that was about it. <laughs> wow. <Well, laughs> so, Garden to play. So did you eat the mushroom? Is that what you did? You oh yeah. And, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you got you got a good buzz, did you? Oh God, you know that was that was uh, fifty years ago. That was a lot of buzzes <laughs> ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to remember all the buzzes, you know. Exactly. It's like that exact buzz that was a lot of buzzes ago <laughs> well, joe, joe crimp told me they used to keep dude that is so that's a fucking i'm yeah. gonna tell i'm gonna when i talk to pat again from junkyard i'm like that's got to be a fucking junkyard song that was a lot of buzzes ago <laughs> it was that was a lot of buzzes ago well yeah awesome. i guess when you're the first night out there when you're on a mushroom trip though and you're out in the middle of that damn swamp because there's no lights there's oh, just a little bit of light that you yeah. had in there. have you ever been there wayne because it's, oh, it's no but no, i've no, seen no, there, plenty of video was a, and was a light. i know no, where it was, was at like, the time no there's a like i mean there's lights it's, like, it's just you know it's just a, just but but no but well, there was I mean, just the lights woods. there and you might be yeah. you saw you saw maybe a little bit of light from the railroad tracks that were up a little bit, but uh, well, the road well, that once, was up. But once the but once pretty dark, much it was fucking black. Darkness, once darkness. No offense. Failed. No, not nothing racist here. What, once darkness fell and you're eating mushrooms, you didn't really open the door to look outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of like, kind of like Willy Wonka, and then he yeah, starts no, singing the, and then you start singing the imagination song. There's a, there was first. There's a great big bull out there that didn't really like people too much, and then he never knew where there was a snake. I mean, oh, you know, you know, you know yeah, it was dark out there. You never knew if there was, you know, you had to really watch where you walk. There's snakes and gators. Did you guys ever try to grow any weed out there at the Hell House? I know you had to have. You should have. I know. Yeah. Huh. I mean, that's a perfect place to grow. Fuck some yeah. Weed. Fuck yeah. Especially at that time when there was nothing around, nobody else around. I, I was don't. telling Craig, I said, Craig, when I was like 13 years old, you guys were at the top of your fame and practice out of Hell House. I said, if I'd have rode out there on my motorcycle and pulled up there and beat on the door and said, hey, let's burn a joint. Would you guys have burned a joint with me or would you have kicked oh, me out of there? <laughs> and he said, oh, if you had a joint, we'd have burned it with you. <laughs> stoner not not that we're doing an ad or anything but speaking of weed let's burn a little <laughs> on the stone roadie podcast we do stoner and co weed <laughs> yeah yeah but uh yeah so so, did you ever do any dimension jumping while you were doing the mushrooms did you ever think you jumped to, to a different dimension i did once <laughs> Yeah, that's um, back when you were talking about different dimensions. I remember yeah, you were in the third yeah, I, dimension, yeah. and you were trying to get to the fourth. I did. I didn't know if I <laughs> I was a wild dream or if I actually jumped over to a fifth dimension or whatever. But it was, absolutely, I think that's part of it. Uh, the, yeah. the the whatever they say that dimensions Doesn't the are, pineal gland have something pineal. With the, yeah, yeah, that's why it's at the Vatican. There's a pine. That's why there's a pine cone yeah, statue yeah. at the fucking Vatican, along with mushrooms, uh, fountains. The pine cone, the mushrooms squeegee off, as Bill Hicks said, the, your pine, your pineal gland, so you could you have access to God or the universe or home, as E.T. called it, phone home. I did a podcast, the movie E.T. I know you're not, you know, this. You, I've I've searched the internet. Is anybody else saying what I'm saying about this? I don't, the Jesus mushroom thing, that's not mine. That's fucking John Marco Allegro. That's many people were saying the Jesus mushroom thing many years before me. I'm just one of the, I'm one of the prophets um, or not prophets or whatever you call it. One of the just talkers, whatever the, the, but Craig the disciples. And are, Craig and I'm I are one, disciples though. I'm a disciple <laughs> of the Jesus mushroom thing. <clears throat> but anyway, what the fuck was I just saying? You were the one, the one, the one that. Uh, oh, that, oh, the ET that, thing. Yeah, the, the movie ET. E. No, everybody just sees that as a family movie about an extraterrestrial, blah blah blah, and it's a long-lasting f classic. 
guess what? It's also just like Wizard of Oz or the Willy or Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. It's a psychedelic story. <laughs> ET. I did a whole podcast about it, man. Three hours or so. Why won't this joint stay lit? Anyway, um, <laughs> God damn it. Um, uh, let me let, let me start at this. Uh, I'll, I'll do. A, I'm going to do a really quick summary because we've already gone through some psychedelic stuff before to to make sense of some of this stuff. Okay, so when it comes like Mike Tyson talks about the toad, right? You've heard Mike Tyson, the psychedelics, talk about the toad. Yeah, or, and Tyson, he yeah, DMT. He's, he's got a lot of uh, of TikToks out there, and he's turned into a philosopher. <laughs> Have you noticed that? It's yes, making sense. It's because of the toad. He talks yeah. about the toad. What he's talking about is DMT, dimethyltryptamine, which pineal. It's in our pineal glands. We're all holding, and it's in our lungs, and supposedly maybe our liver or whatever. Anyway, DMT comes from the toad. Well, it comes from other play. You can get it out of a fucking plate of, blade of grass as well. But the main thing that people know, you remember the jokes about licking the back of a toad and tripping? Yeah. You, you know, that's not how it works. You have to scrape off, scrape their venom, and then you dry it out, and then you smoke it. And you have to take three hits, and boom. Like, Joe Rogan thought that he killed Greg, man, Doug you need Stanhope. to go over to Wayne's house, man. I think you guys would be, <laughs> be good. Yeah, come to Maine, dude. Dude, I've got, I've got plenty of room. i got a big house here. I mean, you know, he's the, got the, it dialed the compound. In. I thought the, Craig was the stoner, man. You're you're the stoner. Well, put it this way. Back in the day, 20 years ago, when um, Joe Rogan and uh, Doug Stanhope did the final season of The Man Show on Comedy Central, uh, Rogan thought he killed Stanhope, giving him DMT. And what happened was Stanhope had an ego death. Which is the rep? That's what represents. That's what ET when ET supposedly dies in ET, and then he comes back and he says ET phone home when he wakes up. He says ET phone home. That's what it was. That represents ego death. He was phoning home, and that's what you do when you trip. But to go back before that even happens in the movie, remember we're talking about the toad and we're talking about mushrooms. ET looks like a cross between a mushroom and a toad, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you you got at the beginning there. of the movie. At the beginning of the movie, you just continually see these close up shots of Peter Coyote's fucking keys on his belt. That's telling you, oh, this movie is a code. This is a key. <laughs> That's why you know I do the Goonies thing because I'm like you know looking for the the treasure, looking for the, looking through the map. What's this figuring this shit out? Encyclopedia Brown. I got to add that to my open. By the way, Encyclopedia Brown. I just taught some moms. So you don't know who Encyclopedia Brown is. You're reading to your kids. You don't know Encyclopedia Brown books. Get them on that shit. They'll be detectives. Ah, anyway. Um, so as I was, uh, what the hell was I saying? Uh, <laughs> shit, shit. Where was I? Where was I? Help me out. Usually, I, I can keep a... track of Craig. I know. I, I know. I can't I know, keep I know, track I know. of you. Man. I know. You're... I know. I know. <laughs> your pineal gland is like gone. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, uh, where the fuck was I? Where was I? Where was I about? Well, you were talking about E.T. Oh, E.T., E.T. Yeah. So at the beginning of the movie, we see uh, the keys. And there's Spielberg, I guess. And he's telling us this is a key. Here we go. And then we see the E.T.s. And they're communicate they communicate it through their hearts. When you're tripping, you communicate through your heart. These guys might be in these, right? in Hollywood might be communicating from that adrenaline. They know it. It's, it he yeah, that well, freaking... that's 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 a, that's yeah, that's later on. That's yeah, when they're they they're doing shrooms and adrenochrome. But this is where they, but he's telling you where it's stolen from. So, um, but I get for you. That's a whole other. I can go off on that conversation for another four hours with you, brother. Yeah. Um, I was in Hollywood. I know that's one of the reasons I left. I understand. I, I've said th yeah, whatever. Let's not get in trouble, Wayne. So, um, so now in the beginning of the movie still, so then we see E.T. with his fingers in the dirt, basically like, you know, remember he's mushroom toad thing. He's kind of like a spore. He's like dropping fucking spores in the dirt. And all of a sudden a little rabbit, there's a close up of a rabbit that pops out and looks at him going down the rabbit hole, just like in Alice in Wonderland rabbit right there. And there, and he's under a pine tree. And then they cut to a shot inside the fucking ship. There's two versions of mushrooms. There's two different kinds of mushrooms growing inside the ship in the movie. Yeah, so maybe everything so does now come we've, down to a mushroom. So that's just, I'm going to stop there <laughs> just from that, and I'm going to jump ahead to the end of the movie. So I already told you about the ego death with E.T. That's what e, that was, what represents E.T. dying. 
which is just him phoning home. He says it, phone ET, phone home. Now, remember when they fly? Oh, oh, let's go to Christmas. So remember when I said about Christmas is all about mushrooms, the red and white mushroom, the pine tree, the gifts under the tree. It's mushrooms growing under the tree. Well, one of the favorite snacks of the caribou in Siberia that we call reindeer, one of their favorite snacks is mushrooms. Oh, now you really? know. Now you know why they can fly. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of ET, remember when the kids all take off like uh -huh. reindeer? Yeah. yeah. ET is wrapped in a white blanket, and e and Elliot's wearing a red hoodie. Red and white. Well, there's <laughs> a lot of mushroom pictures in Disney World too. And at the end, remember what E.T. says to Elliot? The last thing he, when he touches him, what does he touch him? I'll be right here. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know what? You are going down a rabbit hole, man. That's, <laughs> that's, that's just pretty deep. That's just the beginning and the end. There's a whole bunch that I haven't even said from the middle of the movie. Yeah. yeah. It's I guess you nuts. have to Everything be on is a trip. to figure we're, it out. We're in a trip. This is a trip. Here, 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 let me, do, Bill Hicks said it the best. His joke about, uh, uh, about wouldn't you like to see a, a positive, we always see his negative drug stories on the news. You never see a positive drug story. Wouldn't you just once to like to see a positive drug story? Today, a young man on acid realized that all matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration, that we're all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There's no such thing as death. Life is only a dream, and we're the imagination of ourselves. Here's Tom with the weather. <laughs> well, you know who must have been doing mushrooms is George Carlin. You fucking a right, he did some, but he also did a lot of narcotics. Because <laughs> that guy had a you know intuition way back then. He knew what was going on, man. You know, uh, he was can... doing some of the tripping in the '60s, which and they were in the yeah. '60s, by the way, before they outlawed it. Uh, speaking of Manson, that that's one of the things they helped outlaw it. Uh, because, oh, acid and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's fucking so stupid. In those years, they were doing great studies and showing already that uh, psychedelics were having an effect on people who were depressed or alcoholics. Because there was a lot of alcoholics because almost fucking more than half the population was an alcoholic in 19 fucking 40. <laughs> and come there to wasn't. find out, my friend... Uh, who owns an who has an ibogaine clinic in Mexico? She's had she's on her second one. It's in uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Laja. It's like it looks like Bora Bora in fucking Mexico. She has an ibogaine clinic where she treats opiate addicts. She was the one that uh, was the first one to inform me that the whole thing with Bill W. A. A. Bill W. got off of alcohol with thanks to Tim, hope uh, thanks to Timothy Leary and psychedelics. Well, I guess back in the 40s, they didn't call it alcoholic, you know? No, it, no, I don't think so. You know, it, but you it, know what I mean, though. Most people right. were. Yeah. It was, you know, you, you didn't think it was dysfunctional, just like smoking cigarettes wasn't bad for you, you know? And right. Just like everything else. Oh, I'm not putting them down, putting anybody down that were. I'm just saying that's how it was. It was right. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, yeah, a lot of that makes sense. I, I never really, uh, you know, I mean, I, I didn't know where a Christmas tree came from. What, what the hell? How did a Christmas tree oh, come so, into, you know, Christmas with the presents underneath and all of that? You know, and and oh, here's the more to that to add to that. So the mushrooms, the red and white mushroom grows under the pine tree. Well, when they would go and collect them to dry them to, to when they would go collect a bunch of them, what they would do is as they pick them, they would put them in the trees where the sun was hitting them so they'd dry out as they picked more. What does that remind you of? Weed? Decorating a Christmas tree. Oh, oh. I guess a mushroom right? could could, <clears throat> so, uh, could grow out of a log, right? Oh, they do that too. Oh, they grow out from everything, yeah. a lot of things. But the the the, the main the 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 Amanita muscaria, the red and white one that's so much so famous, but that's not the one that we trip with. We use mainly cubensis. The ones that grow out of cow shit and stuff, but the famous one from the red and white, that's the, they grow under pine trees mostly. Um, and then when they would pick them, they would put them in the tree. So they would dry, uh, dry out while they picked more because the lighter they were, the more they could put in a bag and take home. When they got home, they would put them in sacks and set them in front of the fire to dry them out more. What does that remind you of? Uh, the stockings. Right. And, yeah. and, and this is Siberia. 
So they also lived in, in yurts. So they lived in little dome houses and they didn't have snow plows back then. So they knew the front door was going to get snowed in. So they had a door in the front and so in the top. So that's the whole thing with the Santa coming in and bringing the, the, the treats to the fucking the, the, the group and the so, Santas and over there, they wear the red and white and the dots. Where is the, uh, how is it coming out of the cow shit? Is it from the cow eating the grass in the pasture? And then there's yeah, the spores, spores in the, grass, in the grass and then it comes out of the shit. Huh? Basically. Yeah. And it's something with their stomachs as well. That two stomach thing or something about it. There's something, I don't know exactly. I'm not, well, how about stamets, a, but, what about uh, a Buffalo? Would it grow out of a Buffalo chip? I'm guessing, I'm guessing. Cause it also yeah. comes out. I, I'm guessing. Cause I think it grows out of camel shit as well. Hmm. Well, morale mushrooms grows out of um, a certain kind of um, soil with. Uh, yeah, the morals. Yeah, they come out of a soil. And then like uh, you got the chicken uh, of the woods grows out of trees. Yeah, they're around like apples. When you find apple orchards and and stuff like that, you'll find morale mushrooms. So yeah. non-psychedelic. And you know about you know about turkey tail mushrooms for ladies with great. If you if you ever heard about some lady uh, uh, women with breast cancer, tell them to put the turkey to eat. Start eating turkey tail mushrooms. Uh, Paul Stamets <laughs> is like the big. He's like the Terrence McKenna. <clears throat> Terrence McKenna of today. I've watched his Rogan uh, from years ago, probably fucking 10, 12 times. Um. Uh, they named in that the, the Star Trek Discovery that show that started five six years ago, whatever. One of the first reboots of Star Trek TV shows that that thing. One of the characters they named him Paul Stamets, and I didn't watch the whole. I only watched like the first two episodes, I think. But turned out in the in the the season, it was all about uh, the the energy thing had to do with spores, and they named one of the characters Paul Stamets, and the guy the, and the actor. Anthony Rapp that played Paul, Dr. Paul Stamets on the show is the guy that said that Kevin Spacey grabbed him. Now that whole thing that started way back when the, you know, he was also in, in the movie days to confuse. He was the kid with the glasses. Uh, the whole thing with Kevin, Kevin Spacey was me too and shit. Yeah. That's Spacey. He just got cleared of everything. Recently. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. The, yeah. The, the liberal judge got him off. Yeah. Of <laughs> <laughs> The and the funny thing is, the funny thing is, is I'm with you when you say when people say that trash liberals now. And it's funny because I come from being a lefty. I stopped being a lefty. Well, Jesus, I was a lefty up until what was it when uh, what really turned me? Well, the Jesus mushroom stuff in 05, but then uh, Zeitgeist in 2007, really. And Jeff. Oh, 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 I, oh, the Jeff thing that I was that I never got to the Jesus mushroom thing. Jeff was there at the studio when Guns N' Roses recorded the stuff that's on live, uh, live Like a Suicide, basically. Their first EP, which didn't do much because it was before Appetite for Destruction. <laughs> but what they did was they took those uh, some of those songs they recorded in the studio and made them sound live, and they put that on the, the second half of Lies. Remember GNR Lies that they, they released after Appetite? where it had patience on one side was all acoustic. Oh, yeah, right. And then yeah. the other side sounded live, which it really wasn't. Mama yeah, Kin was good, on there. Actually, very good. Yeah, it was great. Jeff was there and worked at Pasha Studios when they recorded that stuff that was Mama Kin, uh, moved to the city, um, that stuff. So there's the, one of the other synchronicities with all this bullshit, you know, with Guns well, N' Roses. Hey, what was the Jeff last Clark. thing you did before you started doing this podcast and what? What what were you doing before you got into the podcast? When I, when I started the podcast in 2019, I was still doing uh, stand up in L.A. Uh, I started doing the podcast because I was doing it. You know, Sam, you ever heard of Sam Tripoli, uh -uh. comedian? Uh, Sam's great. You got to look up Sam. Sam's hilarious. He does a he does a lot of conspiracy theory stuff. Uh, uh, he's a legend at uh, the comedy store in L.A. Um we got to know each other and he, we were doing a podcast together in the basement of the, of the comedy store called conspiracies now. And I was basically, I was kind of like you to Craig. I was his, uh, uh, I was his, uh, uh, Hank Kingsley, his, uh, Ed McMahon. 
I did the open. And that's, now, yeah, that's what Conspiracies said, Now I, I, I with man. Sam Tripoli. <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. And I did this whole thing and, I, and the whole thing with with guests, blah, blah, blah. And I'm Waynus. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so you did stand up? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I did a bit of stand up. I would not. I'm not a professional. I was. Ne- I've never got paid, but I did many shows and I did a lot of uh, uh, <coughs> open, obviously open mics and stuff. But uh, we were doing that conspiracies now thing, in which had a lot of comedians on it. And then he kept like, he's like, "Why aren't you doing a?" Po-? And I had done a podcast before where I, I think I mentioned earlier where I, one of them I I interviewed one of the maps therapists. Was that how long ago was it that you lived in L.A.? I left in September of 2019. Oh, so it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, like four, almost four, yeah, four, and almost that's four when, years. That's when you were doing that. Uh, I started this in a... LA. When I when I started doing the, the Waning Interest podcast, uh, I was still in LA, and I and I wanted to keep it because I'm a I come from radio. That's my beginnings is radio, 1994, and uh, well, you can go back farther than that. My grandfather had a room that had a bunch of radio stuff. He used to talk to people across the world. Um, uh, But I wanted to keep it, it was audio only. And uh, when I came back here, I put this house back together that had been rented out for, we had rented it out for 33 years. So it was basically destroyed. My mom wasn't the best landlord. Sorry, Ma, but you weren't. But uh, so uh, I put that together and during that I took a break because I didn't do it for so at 79 I stopped and uh, a bunch of people asked me you know, a bunch of whips we were like you know, I, I call them the waning interest podcast pack we're like what the fuck what's going on when are you going to do another podcast and when they did some of them were saying when you do if you're coming back you should do YouTube so I was like nah, I wanted to keep it radio audio only but uh, I came back doing I no, it was both. Uh, it's on Rumble and it's on YouTube um, and whoever fucking else steals it. Cause some of people I hear that listen to the yeah. audio, listen to the audio version. They tell me, Oh yeah, I grab it off of overcast. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. I only I go, I, I send it to Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, tune in. And a couple of like other- I, I was watching this. Um, it, it was a documentary on YouTube and this Indian <laughs> dude was talking about Gary Rossington you know, and it was all about Gary Rossington's death and this Indian dude. The, that, oh, that, by the know, way, with a know, heavy, I'm wearing heavy. a Rossington. Yeah. And so I'm like, he must have stole that. You know, I think he stole it from somebody because what, what does this guy got anything to do with Leonard Skinner? You know, he didn't even know anything about what he was talking about. So I think they steal a lot of stuff on YouTube and then they claim it's theirs. So, you know what I'm sick of? <clears throat> Even though it was pretty cool what we talked about earlier with the dude that the song that's that's gone viral and there was that you know the reaction oh, videos that's cool Oliver Anthony right um other than that the reaction one of the things that I've despised about YouTube is the these people that have created channels that have got way more fucking watchers than me who's doing really good I'm doing basically a special a week. And I go off in 90 minutes. You're getting at least 90 minutes. And I'm some funny. I'm a funny cunt. I know I'm fucking funny because I know what funny is. <laughs> um, but uh, these reaction videos, these people that have these channels just watching other people's shit. Just, <laughs> oh, that kills oh, me. Oh, I cannot yeah, stand Christ. that. Yeah, they, oh my God. they have a window over here and they're watching somebody and they're going, oh, <laughs> oh, that drives me crazy. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a comic doing fucking airline oh. jokes. It's like that's pretty oh hacky at this God. point. Yeah, it's uh, it's almost it's pathetic, like but that's why we stand out. That's one of the cool <laughs> things. Is there's a lot of cool truth. Oh, and like that. Oh, to go back to that whole thing with the junkyard thing, and then you know that whole thing where I've always, like I said, for years I've been a junkyard fan since 1989 when that album, when their first album came out, and I've been. I don't know how many years I've been describing them as, <clears throat> which I had to come up with something back before YouTube. Cause I couldn't just say back in the day, you know, I couldn't just say, Oh, here's something, you know, I only had the cassette or the CD and uh CD, sorry, CD. Um, so I, I came up with it. Like to me, they're like fucking if Skinner and ACDC had a baby and GNR was their babysitter, <laughs> you know, and it's fucking, and then it, it's progressed to like, Holy shit. I didn't even realize the guy Al Cooper, who played on a cup on a song on the first album, was the was Skinner's fucking first producer. <laughs> it's like holy shit, 
And uh, and then realizing as years went by and getting more into studying the lyrics, you know, maturing as a person a little uh, and, you know, getting into the lyric stuff. Obviously, this motherfucker helped me with getting into lyrics um, and then realizing, like, wait, you know, yeah, it's like the whole dirty, you know, young, dirty suds, you know, uh, that's Ronnie and that's David and, you know, and that whole thing. And then when you and then watching you and you go fucking acdc wanted to grab leon like what the fuck you know it just, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it just added another one to my thing going holy shit this is like what i was saying for 20 years it's like it's it just it's you can see more and of course everybody has the same some people are like oh wayne you just it's all about your ship no i'm saying everybody we're all neo at the end of every podcast i say we're all neo aka one the words it's like Mr. Mojo Ryzen, <laughs> EO one. Um, we all are. So you're me. We're always actually looking in the mirror. One of the greatest spiritual teachings is just if you can remember for 10 seconds a day, as hard as it is, for at least 10 seconds straight a day. If you can remember, oh, that's right. Just like in the back of my eye, it's all backwards. This is all backwards. I'm not looking out at Craig and Griff and and a version of myself on a screen. I'm actually looking in the mirror at all times. Everything is me. Do so you remember they, that, Craig? Do I remember Alan that? Watts. Can, can you remember that? Alan, <laughs> no. that's an Alan. Uh -uh. I learned that Alan Watts. That's just another way Jesus said it or the mushroom said it. Um, you know, Krishnamurti, uh, Eckhart Tolle. It's another fucking, they all saying the same fucking thing. And Alan Watts, when he said that, and Terrence McKenna, many, many people, I can, the list goes on. But when Alan Watts said that, that, I mean, that was like the closest thing to, you know, clear it up, you know, make it summarize. Like, oh, yeah, the eye. That's right. That makes the everybody constantly saying we're all one. Oh, yeah. And then when you're tripping balls, you really realize, <laughs> yeah, we are all one. That's why that's where ESP comes from. Mm -hmm. That's where because you feel like in the heart, you feel like you're communicating. Like if we're all the three of us are in the same room and we both do we all three of us do seven grams of mushrooms. <laughs> There's going to be many points and in, in the, through the night where we're going to communicate without saying any fucking oh, yeah. words. Oh yeah, yeah, that's happened. Yeah, see, how do people oh. think we're living in a virtual reality these days? Huh? <laughs> it does seem like uh, some kind of a dream, especially it's just like Oliver uh, Anthony said. You know, he wants to wake up, and it's just not true, but it is. Oh, that's it right. is. It's a there's nice a, ride. And, you know, I mean, a this could be heaven on earth. If These everybody people that knew. are listening to his song, you know, it, it's their everything they wanted to say to the people they wanted to say it to, but it's a they summary. never could. <laughs> and that's why everybody likes it. That's because why they when you teach hear you. It, you go, that's exactly what I think. And I'm glad you wrote that because now people can hear it. And now everybody's on the same page with the way we think. And what I would say to my kid, with that being viral, one of the first things I say to my kid is, well, she's 22 now, but I would go, now see, remember remember back in the day, remember when it seemed like it was annoying and everything, when they wanted you to, when they actually, when, when your homework was to write a summary of something, they'd give you a subject and write a summary, and it was like a headache, like, what? Yeah. That's what he did. That's a summary. Yeah, of what that's everybody's a summary. fucking, that's, that's an example. So that's what I would always do. But he a may parent. have taken a mushroom. I would pull those room. little summaries and songs and but I guarantee that fucker's tripped a couple of times. For yeah, sure. he must have taken some mushrooms because that song, yeah, that that thing's really deep. It's gorgeous. You know, rich men north of Richmond. That's pretty, you know, where'd that come he, from? He's that's got true. about eight good songs. There's one called Cobwebs and Cocaine. And, the, and <laughs> whoa. <laughs> yeah, Cobwebs <laughs> and Cocaine. And then the, the other one, if, if I had a dollar. Okay. <laughs> and then. There's, there's quite a few. That's why it reminds me of, of Hank Williams Jr. Because, you know, it's like way out there and it's about him, you know. And you know how Hank Williams used to write, you know, all those cool songs. And he's that's basically what he's doing. He's writing some really cool stuff, you know. Back we'll just Skinner, have to get right him there. on here and we'll ask him how, you know, how he came up with that. Railroad song. You just made me think <laughs> of railroad song. What Hank, what Jimmy and Hank were all about. Trying to What's figure cool out about what... that railroad song, though, is how they use the instruments, you know, to sound like a railroad. You know, everything was, it's like the drums and 
everything is just to, yeah. to train and that fucking boogie that it gets into the, i mean you just then you know yeah, yeah. And then you think you know shuffling shoes oh did you like that thing that i sent you guys uh i was watching the the rick Beto interview with kirk hammett and he mentions um before you know cliff burton the original bass player of metallica well not original original but you know as what's known as the original um there was a dude before him but um he died in the bus crash you know after master of puppets and you know, jason newstead joined metallica as the new bass player or whatever but in the rick beto kirk hammett interview it's like was it like an hour and a half or whatever I loved it where I'm going along. I think it's an hour and 30 minutes in or something. And he start and Kirk's telling the story about back in the day with, uh, with Cliff, even though he was a bass player and a virtuoso bass player, uh, uh, he would also, he also played guitar and he'd ask Kirk, Hey, these Ed King parts, this, the Ed King part here in the Skinner tune blah, 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 and all these things. And he'd fucking Kirk's like, yeah, whatever. And he just play it incessantly. Cause uh, he wanted to know the Ed King parts in these fucking Skinner tunes from the first three albums. Anyway, I thought that was fucking killer, which of course, because I already, you know, I'm into you guys. I'm so into you, Craig. Anyway, um, uh, you said, daddy, you I said just call that. you daddy. Now, you we're, doing mother... a threesome. we're doing a gay threesome right now. <laughs> you sent me that clip and, and, and bookmarked it. And I watched, yeah, I watched that part of it. Yeah. And you Wasn't that cool? He was sorry. Do you know how to play? Yeah, I know how to play that. Well, show me. And he played it for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> but you wouldn't. You but that, the coolest part is you're not gonna. You, you're not gonna. I didn't expect to hear anything about Skinner in a fucking in an interview with uh, the Metallica oh, yeah. guitarist. You know, and that just popped yeah. up like, and it had to do with Cliff, which was even cooler. You know, well, Metallica so, did Tuesday's Gone though. And, yeah. Uh, well, you found out just how many people loved Skinner when Gary died, because you know, oh, I mean, man. look at all the people that were, you know, you know, was paying respects to him. Um, and I will having, say that I having I Paul that Rogers I've... at your funeral—that's pretty big, dude. Right there. Dude, you know, it don't get any bigger than that. I mean, maybe Robert Plant and Jimmy Page showing up, maybe. And then, and then, oh, and then to top that off, I think what like a month or it was a few weeks later, whatever that thing that was on TV where they did some kind of special, who was in the middle, who was the oh, big yeah. part of that slash. Yeah. Slash was there. That's right. <laughs> I called it bitches. It's <laughs> almost like it didn't fit with all those liberal people. You know, it's almost like Skinner was yeah. kind of like, it just didn't it's true. Fit. <clears throat> but see are those, you know, Oh, that's what I was at before. Oh, when I, uh, Speaking of the liberal thing, that's where we got off at one point where I understand where you're coming from because it used to be where I was that lefty and anybody who leaned a little right. And I, was, I just immediately thought they were racist. Well, I mean, that was a long time ago. But, oh, I already did that. Jeff was the one that helped me with the, the stuff with Jesus Mushroom and then fucking Zeitgeist and all the stuff. And then that's where it really flipped when I learned about the banking and I learned a little bit more. And then I went, wait, I've already watched the movie Network. And they fucking told me this. Oh, it made Network make, you know, make even more sense. And then to learn about, you know, what happened in 1913 with the Federal Reserve taking over and all the stuff. And it's all been manufactured. Every, everything's been a fucking lie ever since. Yeah. And that's why they hate Trump so bad is because he Trump said the, was he's one told of the them. truth. But he was, he was one of them. And then he yeah. turned on him. And but he still is one of them because he was he was going to fucking talking about doing the fucking vaccines, too. And he yeah, gave he's, money to Israel and whatever. Yeah, he's, he's got he yeah, still he's, does their thing. He's controlled opposition like Bernie was. Yeah, but you know, the only thing that he does have a track record for, you know, where I'd rather be with him than I am where I'm at now. That's for sure. Oh, no question. He didn't take us into yeah. any more wars. That's no question. He Craig, put you off that Ukraine up all right? thing. I'm with you. Craig, you holding up all right? I'm, Craig. Yeah, I'm I'm doing good. <laughs> yeah. I was just I was just I just looked and I go, holy crap, I think we've been on here for a couple hours. <laughs> That's what I do. I go on for you know, I've got I've got some podcasts but, that go over we were, five. We were talking about doing a, a part two on this, so I don't know. Chapter two, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. yeah. Chapter two of the Swapcast. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let me see if what else did I want to get. Uh, oh, I wanted to ask you a question. One last one thing was uh, uh, the Winterland 75 
on oh, YouTube. Oh yeah, I that love that Wonderland. Yeah, that's great. Is that's that where you? Ronnie without the hat? And is that you, Craig, that takes Gary's drink during Saturday Night Special? Probably. Probably. So I wrote that. I wrote that in my notes been, fucking it months ago. Dean. It was either me or Dean. It's probably seventy-five. It, that it could have been. It could have been me or Dean. I, yeah, I can't say for sure. I'm gonna go watch it again now that we've. Cause I, I wrote that. I wrote was that in it, my notes it, long it, time ago, and I haven't even watched stage, that one in a while. Was it stage left or was it right behind the amp line? If it was right behind the amp line, it was me. I think that's what it was. Yeah, if it was right over his amp, it was me. It could have been Dean. Oh, when Dean. somebody handed Gary the beer and he was playing with one hand and he and it was like, oh 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 that would have been that was me I think yeah yeah I, you I, remember that one Craig where yeah, Gary yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, I, I, just, now I know which one you mean that was that was me I think yeah yeah I think it was a maybe it was a. Uh, I remember. It. Yeah, I don't know if it's a beer or what. Was, but... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anybody right, watching? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Anybody yeah. watching or listening? Go to YouTube and just uh, type in Skinner to Winterland '75 and go to Saturday Night Special, and we'll find and you'll find it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was me. I'm pretty sure I remember. That, I'm gonna go the, do it again. That's the black and white and, where Ed King was so phenomenal in that Winterland man. He he was like Billy Powell wasn't in oh, it. That's another thing I wanted to say. So you got. Guns and Roses thing, which one? This is part of the one I didn't even put in the in the old in the old in that whip that I did. Fucking Billy Powell and Dizzy Reed. Billy Powell was there and stuff, but he wasn't originally a member. He was a roadie at kind of at first he, and doing that yeah, stuff, he right? Was only, so, he was only with the band about a few months before I started. I mean, it was that was yeah, it was right. Yeah. <clears throat> but he had done roadie stuff or whatever, but he'd been around the guys yeah, for doing yeah, stuff, yeah. right? He was well, one it, of the original roadies with Kevin Nelson, yeah. Well, with Guns N' Roses at the Hell House behind, behind Guitar Center, Dizzy was part of another band that had another storage unit there, and they were friends, and I can't remember the name of the fucking band. I can't remember the name of the band. But anyway, that's how he got to know Axel or whatever, and then he joins the band for uh, Use Your Illusion, is a keyboard player so then all of a sudden they go from not having one and now they have one and dizzy's been like one of the he's besides axel he's the longest running member <laughs> and he wasn't in, in, in the og but he came in they started in 85 dizzy joined the band in 90 i think it was 91 so it was a few years in but he'd been around he'd known them for years kind of like billy powell that thing and it was through hell house behind guitar center guitar <laughs> back to rosington did i tell you i'm wearing the rosington yeah <laughs> did you ever go up uh wayne did you oh ever by go the way to, it to fucking s- that little fucking woo woo in uh in in needle in the spoon oh my god that every fucking time it to this day i've been listening to that <laughs> song for i'm 52 years old and still just yesterday i'm listening to it and fucking when that woo woo when i fucking here's alan and then fucking woo woo gay and i still go <laughs> i still get a little tingle fucking did you ever go up to uh san francisco and to subway no. guitars and fat dog and meet fat dog no, my that kid's been that, to Frisco, but my, I never went to Frisco. Yeah, I never Subway went. Guitars, there's a guy named Fat Dog there, and he owns that. And that guy, man, he's got some stories. Anybody that knows Fat Dog at Subway Guitars in San Francisco, you got to check that guy out, man. Just now, call is that him fat, up. Is that Fat with an F or a PH? <laughs> F. They call him Fat Dog because he eats a big hot dog every day. You know. Okay, he, is that and it's in Frisco. I'm starting to get a gay vibe. No, no, he's uh, he actually owns a winery out, uh, and uh, even he, in San Francisco, a, the gay capital of California, but, yeah. But he knows everybody, you know, he knows all these big names. Um, Back to stand up for a minute, used to sorry. give them, you know, Dice. guitars to record with and stuff like that. But I thought for sure you might have known him, yeah, because you no, just about everybody knows him. I think Back he's still dog. around. I want to look him up after I uh, yeah, go look back him and up. look at that Winterland with, with everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody's fucking the, that Winterland show. All the ones that are on YouTube, the fucking views are going to go shooting up after this fucking podcast. I'm sorry, Swapcast in a world where laughter was king. <laughs> That's pretty close, man. 
That's pretty. You have hard. to see. Oh, that's something I also want you to uh, want the uh, want the uh, the the roadie the roadie fans to uh, look up. I know a bunch of the the pack has. Uh, you have to look it up. It's the uh, comedian Jerry Seinfeld comedian movie trailer, and then it'll say Seinfeld on the thing when you look it up. You have to watch the trailer for the movie comedian. It's like twenty years old or whatever. Uh, the best part about the trailer is because I was a voice guy for a long time. And one of the best parts of the trailer is it's it's not about the movie at all. It's just about the guy recording the trailer, and he can't stop saying "in a world." It's Hal Douglas, but they call him Jack in the thing, and it's Tom Papa, comedian Tom Papa is his face you see in the booth going. No, I think he's the one going. I hate you because <laughs> the guy just can't. It's this movie. It's about a comedian in a world. Where laughter was king. What was no, the name there's of the no guy in a that world. did there's that? No one, in no, the there's world. no one in a world, Jack. No, no one in a world. In a land before. No, not in a land. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you have to see it. Look it up. It's only a minute something long. What were you, I remember question? when that guy died and they tried to replace him. You just couldn't get anybody sound. Well, like no. Him. Who I'm talking about is Hal Douglas. Is in the is in the mo- is in the trailer. Hal Douglas was another guy who did the, a lot of the trailer oh, stuff. It oh, wasn't okay. just Don Luff. I used to have the same uh, agent as Don LaFontaine. I was with Tisherman. When oh, Don really? Went, yeah, and I yeah, had a chance guy. to go hang out with him at his house, but I but never he's took dead it. now, right? He's yeah, dead. he died. Yeah. Yes, he passed away. And it yeah, shouldn't he was... have happened. He got, he got fucked by the, uh, the doctors made mistakes. Well, Craig, you, you ready to wrap her up, man? You about ready? To... Yeah, we can do that. Uh... All righty then. Uh, Look, it's well, still sunlight in Ohio. This, this was supposed to be a wane, waning interest podcast because uh, we were talking about doing a a swap cast or whatever we were talking about doing. But we that is what we're doing. But we we've been getting kind of off topic on the Stone Roadie Show, so we we me and Griff decided we would get go off and. Instead of doing a stone roadie show and not talking about Skinner like we're supposed to giving skin formation, but we all want to know on the stone roadie show that we'd do it. We'd go off and do a, a wane, wane, waning interest podcast or the whip. But, <laughs> uh, but I couldn't get my ding um, microphone to work on on his uh server so we had to go over and i had to host this this podcast and we decided that this swap cast yeah so this is our first swap cast of the stone roadie show and we got together and had a little collaboration with the whip is this going to be wane, 93 for us? The waning interest podcast, no, the don't whip. Don't your numbers. Just call it the swap cast. The swap yeah. cast, whatever. I keep messing up because I got brain damage. And... It would have been 121 for the whip, but uh, I'm just we're just going to call it the swap cast. Oh, you're not going to categorize it as a as a numbered podcast? No, it's a spe- it's no, it's too fucking special to have a number. Yeah, <laughs> we'll call it the Magic Mushroom Podcast, dude. I'm good. Uh, <laughs> so I learned. Yeah. I learned a lot, man. I have to say, I learned a lot. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. I like when people say that, and and uh, yeah, or, or don't get turned off on the because, uh, like, I, when it comes to when I talk to people about it, when I when it comes, you know, in other conversations, I always try to i've learned to start with listen i'm not saying anything bad about jesus i'm all with the jesus stuff i'm just saying <laughs> it wasn't a person and it all gets explained here and they're like holy shit <laughs> and just all you have to do and i've just learned through you know i wasn't as good as it not, not that i'm i wasn't as good as it I wasn't as good as I am now at it where I can summarize. It used to be where I was all, as you know, all over the place, even fucking worse. So I'd make it worse. <laughs> but now I do. It's, it's more, it's, it seems easier now with my pulling from all these different classic fucking stories. That's the easiest way to go. Cause everybody, that's what they already know. Yeah. Pull reference they material. Already know. Yeah. Reference material. And they all fucking know this stuff and it's all right in our front of our face. 
and just keeps being taken from us. And that's part of the 1984 bullshit, you know, to, the, the, to keep covering, keep putting that mask. Basically, like as Bill Hicks would say, spray painting fucking black paint on our pineal glands. <laughs> yeah, we just yeah wanna... rel religion and politics are two <laughs> subjects that are hard to to uh, face these days. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? That motherfucker Oliver, he's he he's he gave a he he's uh, basically I, I would say he's a big chunk of kindling for the revolution. Yeah, and I would like to see the songs that Ronnie would write, or even Steve, if they were alive in in, the, in four decades after they oh. did what they did. Yeah, that's another thing with Guns N' Roses, by the way. Real quick, dude, look at Steve Gaines in those seventy seven, seventy six shows, and that fucking beard he had, right, and the clothes he was wearing, and then <laughs> look at uh, Robin Fink with Guns N' Roses in. The in 06, 07, and you're like, he looks, but he's just wearing shades. He looks like he, he's like got, got another, you know, Guns N' Roses thing, an added guitarist later on. It, he reminds me of fucking Steve Gaines. <laughs> it's just, yeah. you know, it's fucking wild, dude. With that go to hell. Synchronicity dude. at work. Huh? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> All righty then. So here we go for another closing of the Stone Roadie Show and a swap cast with the whip, the waning interest podcast. And I guess we're gonna, I guess we're all gonna do, and I'm gonna sing to you now. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep token until then. Until next time on a swap cast with the Stone Roadie Show and the Whip the Wayne Ginters podcast. We're going to wrap this up and call it a night. And happy trails to you. And see you later, alligator, at the Wild Crocodile. And there we go. We're out of here. Yeah, you guys are tripping me out. <laughs> <laughs> Toodaloo. There we go. <laughs> All right. See you. Bye.